29, Eric Dickerson, now in the horseshoe helmet of the Indianapolis Colts. In his four-plus years in the NFL, Dickerson has gained more than 7,000 yards. The passing star, Miami's Marino, top passer in pro football three of the last four seasons. His quick releases have shredded NFL defenses. 15 touchdowns in five games this year. The stars do fit, Eric Dickerson and Dan Marino. The AFC East, five teams tied at four and four, so the record within the division increases in playoff importance. The Colts at this stage enjoy a slight but significant edge. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Joe Robbie Stadium. It's a sunny Sunday, 80 degrees, and we are going to see the stars out this afternoon. And arguably, Merlin Olsen, you have to go back to the 1950s to find two such dominating players, the passer then, Johnny Unitas of the Baltimore Colts and Cleveland's Jim Brown, the runner, defensive Hall of Famer you are. Uh, how do you stop a guy like Marino? <laughs> you don't stop Marino. What you try and do is get some control on him. You do that by getting your hands up in his face, pressure right up the middle. You try and mix your coverage as best you can and disguise your blitzes, but you don't really stop Marino. Eric Dickerson, on the other hand, uh, how do you keep him from 100 yards? Well, he must be very disciplined on defense. You can't give him that crack. He's always looking for the home run. You've got to gang tackle him. He's so strong, and the other thing you have to do is strip at that football and try and force the fumble. Ron Meyer, he's brought respectability to the Hoosier State and Indianapolis. He took over late last year, won the last three games, and Don Shula in his silver anniversary year in the NFL as a head coach, his 25th season. And both men talked about the stars that they face today. They affect the entire team. The kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers, and Fouad Reves, who was in a hospital on Friday night with neck spasms, will kick it to Albert Bentley down on the goal line for the Indianapolis Colts. We're underway, 70,000 here. The kick is short. Bentley to the eight. 30 and to the 32-yard line. The Indianapolis Colts. Bring on the offense, and Gary Hogaboom, number seven from Central Michigan University, returns as the quarterback. Eric Dickerson and Matt Booza. Well, Dickerson, the one back set with Matt Booza and Bill Brooks, the wideouts. Pat Beach is the tight end. They use the H-back system. Tim Sherwin, number 83, will be the man in motion. A big, big offensive line of Hinton, Ott, Donaldson, a pro bowler, Salt, and Call. Hinton also a pro bowler last year. the 32 Hogaboom comes out throwing and misses Brooks who was wide open on the far sidelines and looked to be set up Merlin Olsen as if it was going to be a short pass and Hogaboom then let Brooks go down the sidelines and was open but couldn't hit him first let's uh, go to the defense of the Miami Dolphins and they've been pleased uh, that they are improving uh, two touchdowns allowed in the last six quarters T.J. Turner Ryan Socha, the ex oiler on the nose John Bosa Boston College rookie Brzezinski ship offered all a pro bowler as a rookie last year Mark Brown's the leading tackler and there's the deep four Hogaboom again passing and a flag goes down an obvious interference call against 49 William Judson Dick, both of these teams have had some trouble with their cornerbacks in particular. Number 49, first down. You just hear Jim Tunney making the call. There's Judson. Judson just being victimized on this play. And here are the Colts, everyone expecting them to run with Eric Dickerson. And they come out firing that ball the first two times. And of course, what you have to do offensively against the Miami team is be unpredictable. And that's what they're doing right here. Well, you talked about mixing it up against Marino on defense, and that's the same formula offensively for the Colts. Try to mix up the Miami defense. Come out passing instead of going to Dickerson. And here's Eric Dickerson, the first carry, blasting through a hole on the left side out to the 43-yard line. When it appears he's gotten very little, that's a five-yard gain before Mark Brown can make the tackle. Dick, you talked about that big offensive line up front. And they said an interesting thing about Dickerson. They said he is a little more difficult to block for than Bentley because you never know where he's going to end up. He may start to the left and end up all the way to the right. He'll go for that crack, and he's always looking for the home run. But Brown, who really took the punishment making the tackle, the safety man for Miami, second and five. Ogaboom again throws, and it's incomplete off the fingertips of tight end Pat Beach. 
So Hogeboom returning to the lineup after being out for a month and uh, really not sharp on his early tosses. The size of the lines, Merlin. Look at that Colt Look at the weight. weight. Look at the weight. I mean, they're, they're both tall offensive lines, but a 291 pound. I mean, in the town I grew up in, we had buildings smaller than these guys. <laughs> they still do. <laughs> Sell billboards on their backs. Crowd trying to help out the Miami defense. Nine men on the line of scrimmage for the Dolphins. And it's Dickerson. Nothing there. <laughs> T.J. Turner and John Offerdahl. There's Offerdahl from Western Michigan. Brilliant year last year is first in Miami. And it really, it's the return of Offerdahl. You see him right there. He's the man, along with T.J. Turner, who came quickly from the offside. Also some help in there from, from the uh, right side linebacker. But boy, what a nice play by the defense. Shut them down. Ron Stark, who has been the top punter in the league three of the last four years, to kick it towards Scott Schwades. Drives it. Schwades at the 15. 25. And Schwades, a return of some 27 yards. The former Syracuse star. A 28-yard return of a 43-yard punt, and Miami opens in good position. Jim Perriman made the tackle. We have our first time out. They come from all over the world to compete for the... 1980, when Burt Jones was the quarterback for the Baltimore Colts, have the Colts defeated the Dolphins 14 in a row for Miami. This has been a team, they just look at their schedule every year, and Don Chula says there's two wins for us. But the Colts figure that this might be the time they turn it around. Making a different kind of noise in Indianapolis these days. And in fact, Ron Meyer quoted in the papers this week saying, we've turned the corner when we beat Miami. Mark Clayton to the right, and James Pruitt for the injured Mark Duper. Duper will not play today. He's put on the inactive list. Yesterday is the other white out, and they go to Pruitt. And it's almost intercepted. Dwayne Bickett was there to bat it away. Here is the Marino-led Miami offense. Lorenzo Hampton finished so strongly last year. Their top runner and receiver, Woody Bennett, the blocker. James Pruitt for Duper and Clayton, the wide receivers. Bruce Hardy, who had... Uh, 50-some catches last year as the tight end. Geisler, Foster, the great center. White, Stevenson, Toth, and Lee, the blockers. Troy Stratford, the fourth-round draft pick from Boston College now in the backfield. Good receiver. Leads the team. He takes it on the ground this time. He's a little darter. Not to the 47 for a gain of about five before Barry Krause, the veteran from Alabama, can make the tackle. How important is an all-pro center? Watch him right here, controlling Jerome Sally, number 76, on the nose. And even though Sally's got a face mask and a handful of it, Dwight Stevenson using those powerful hands, and he has, I think, the best hands in the business. Of course, I can remember, Dick, when that was an insult. But today, that's, that's a compliment. If you're an offensive uh, player, a lineman, yeah, yeah that, was, uh, that was a negative in your time. Third down, shotgun Marino going long for Stratford. And the flags go down. I'm not sure that was a catchable ball. There was no question there was interference. But I don't think Stratford could have caught the ball. But uh, I believe that's going to hold. Mismatch of speed as Freddie Robinson trying to cover the speedy back. That's the defense. Defense number 27, first down. So obviously a penalty. Watch Robinson just reach out and strip him to the ground. You don't know whether he could have gotten there, Dick, because he'd already been tackled. Yeah, that's right. So that uh, is a big penalty against the Colts. 37 yards, and it's first down Miami at the 16. And the weakness of this Colts secondary, obvious very quickly as Marino goes after them. Throw it right. Clayton left this time. Marino, incomplete through the hands of Mark Clayton. Defensively, the Colts line up this way. Donnell Thompson, Jerome Sally, John Hand. The 3-4 lineup, there are five number one picks of those seven. Johnny Cooks, Cliff Odom, Barry Krause, and Dwayne Bickett. 
And the back four suspect, Willie Tullis and Eugene Daniel at the corners, Nesby Glasgow, and rookie Freddie Robinson from Alabama, the safeties. But an improving defense. This whole Indianapolis team getting stronger every week. Stratford, the lone setback. Marino, well protected, incomplete, and another flag. They were trying to hit Stratford. It appeared that linebacker Cliff Odom was the man. Uh, I think maybe Johnny Cooks, Dick. Guns. No, you're Guns. right. It was Number Odom. 93. It was Odom. First down. It was Odom. Here's the shot of that last play. You see him hooked right there. Just turned him around. So the rookie, Troy Stratford, has made two big plays without touching the football as the ball has moved now just outside the five-yard line stripe. That's right, 47 yards, 37 on the first penalty and 10 on this one. It's first and goal at the 6 for Miami. And Pruitt goes out, and John Geisler, a big Geisler, confused. I think, checking in, had to check in because he's going to be a tight end here. So he had to check in with the officials, and now there's not enough time. Geisler had forgotten to check in, and Marino forced to take a timeout. And that does not please Don Shula. That's just one of those little mistakes that really gnaw at the veteran Shula. We race November to remember when heart-pounding excitement returns to the greens where one putt could be worth $450,000. Jack Nicklaus, Arnold Palmer, Lee Trevino, and Fuzzy Zeller play the Skins game. It's a November to remember on NBC. Less than three minutes gone in this opening quarter, and Marino and Miami perched on the Indianapolis six-yard line. First and goal. And it's a touchdown for Lorenzo Hampton. Hampton's first rushing touchdown of this season, and that one looked easy. Good power running. Watch 84, Bruce Hardy in motion as a tight end. He becomes the lead blocker in this set. Does a good job right there on Eugene Daniel to open that hole for Lorenzo Hampton. But Hampton, like a steamroll. Look at the power here. Keeps those shoulders square, runs right through one tackle and on into the end zone. Remember, Rave is in a hospital two nights ago with a bad neck, but... Uh Watching him kick before the game, no problem, and he boots that one down the middle. He's still having some problems. He's not moving his head too well. Miami with a quick early lead. Eric, smile! Eric, smile. Greatest running back in NFL history. Eric Dickerson in the background, 29, is in the other category, along with uh, Red Grange and a few others. <laughs> Just a few others. Jim Brown, Walter Payton, Gail Sears, and O.J. Simpson have specific numbers, and the early leader, we understand, is the Bears' Walter Payton. Norris Anderson, the fine writer of the football news, says he would vote for O.J. Simpson. The kickoff comes down to Bentley. He's got a hole. Look out. And he's out to the 44-yard line, and a late flag goes down back at the 30. The flag wasn't dropped back at the 30 until after the tackle made at the 44. Lifford Hobley made the stop, but holding against Indianapolis. On comes Eric Dickerson and the Colts offense. Dick, one of the things that I think helps us to realize the significance of these two great players, Eric Dickerson and Dan Marino, is that they not only force you to prepare for them defensively, the but they also force the team to prepare differently. In other words, when you have a Dickerson on the other side, Shula has to be worried about controlling the football. If Dickerson has a hot day, he can keep Marino on the sideline. Marino, on the other hand, forces an offensive coordinator on the other side to say, we've got to put a lot of points on the board or we're not in this game. Yeah, we're in a scoring test when That's you play it. Miami. So instead of the 44, Hogaboom starts at the 20, and it's Dickerson on a counter out to the 28-yard line. The one thing that Eric Dickerson does so well is to cut back against the grain. Watch him here. 53, Ray Donaldson, the center. Good job of blocking on Boza on the outside. Dickerson just needs a crack. He is so explosive. Just give him a little bit of room, and he is gone. We're seeing perhaps the two finest centers in the entire National Football League today, and Stevenson and Donaldson, who played in the SEC at uh, Georgia and at Alabama. 
at the same time. Dickerson has a first down at the 32-yard line into the grasp of Socia, Bud Brown, and Mark Brown. Well, when you want to concentrate on the running game, you better look inside for the strength up front. Kevin Call, 71, 53, Donaldson, 64, Ben Utt. Those guys doing a good job in there, but Socia, who is playing with an injured ankle, did a good job on his own in there, and that's a concern for Shula, in particular from, uh, particularly for Olivadotti. Fake to Dickerson. Hogaboom going deep and over the head of Bill Brooks. Let's take a look at other early action in the National Football League as Hogaboom again off the mark. Cleveland, early field goal lead against the Bills. Lions with a three-pointer at RFK. Rams a touchdown run by Charles White and the Cardinals come back with a field goal. Ron Meyer made the decision to put Hogaboom in the game over Jack Trudeau, who had had three very fine ball games back to back because Hogaboom is his quarterback. This one is complete to Pat Beach, the tight end, out to the 40 yard line as Beach carries a couple of Dolphin tacklers with him. Jackie Ship, number 50, finally gets him to the ground. It's going to take. Gary Hogaboom a little while to get back into the swing of thing. You see the, the heavy padding around his middle. A broken rib and a punctured lung put him on the sideline. The tape on his left hand, reminiscent of an earlier injury when he had the ligaments torn off of that left thumb. He has had a very disastrous year physically, but I gotta tell you, he is a fierce competitor. This kid is not a quitter, and he said, I am ready to play. And a shoulder separation last year against the Miami Dolphins. Third and two. No. And he misses again. This time, Walter Murray threw the ball behind him. So, Hogaboom, and understandably, he's been on the sidelines and being sharp and practiced and then having that same kind of uh, acuity during uh, a game is a much different uh, situation. And Hogaboom is going to play himself probably into that uh, passing He'll shape. have to get back to it, Dick. The last two weeks, this cold offense so heavily uh, running that they knew they had to get back to some balance. Well, they've thrown a lot more than they've passed, or they've, they've thrown more than they've run here so far. Not successfully, however. Stark to kick it to Schwedes. This kid has a great leg. This Ooh, one not a very good, kick. A good end kick. End over end to the 20. Schwedes a bobble. 10, 15, and returns it some 18 yards out to the 38-yard line, and a flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. Now, if that's against Miami for offside, it could be a first down Indianapolis, but it is not. Ron Stark has had trouble kicking the ball this year. That one must have been a badly dropped. He did not hit it well. It was low. It was a line driver, did not spiral, did not turn over. Illegal motion, 43 on the kicking team is declined. First down, Miami. You don't pick up that many yards uh, when your kicker can't get a better kick on it than that. This is a windy stadium, by the way. It's the kind of stadium that will, will give kickers nightmares because you don't know what that wind is going to do. Comes in over the top of the stadium and swirls here. And you just never know what's going to happen. There you get a feeling it is a gusty day out there. Twisting that flag. 40-yard kick, 18-yard return. Marino from his 37. Woody Bennett with his aqua marine shoes picks up three or four Jerome Sally traded from the New York Giants where he had been really a replacement nose tackle and look how Stevenson number 57 turns on him look at him using those hands to create a little alley in behind him for Woody Bennett and one thing you'll notice about these ball carriers for the Miami Dolphins very secure in the way they lock onto that football Stevenson from Alabama. What a great player he is. That's such a tough block to sustain. Incomplete as he goes to the tight end. Dan Johnson just activated yesterday. Johnson has been on the injured list from Iowa State. You saw Dwayne Bickett, number 50, knocked down an earlier pass by Marino. A very smart, very capable football player. Leaping back, getting almost a hand on that one. He is having an outstanding year, leading in tackles for this cold defense. Really kind of 
arriving, although he's played well, at the kind of promise that they knew he had when they drafted him number one out of USC. Marino from the shotgun. Dolphins so good on third down. And, of course, the reason Marino's tremendous passing talent. Look at the time. Throws it to Mark Clayton. A first down at the Colts 47. Without Mark Duper on the field, and of course he's out with rib injuries, Mark Clayton becomes even more important to Dan Marino. I'm talking to Nesby Glasgow, the cold defensive back, he said the thing that kills you is that even if you've got position on Mark Clayton, Marino still throws to him, and there's the proof of it right there. Such confidence, and of course Clayton has proved that if he can't get to it, he's going to make sure that the defensive back can't get there either. Clayton from Louisville, five touchdown passes to lead Miami. Again, you saw Stevenson with a great pass block to help Marino with all that time. Oops. Time out. That's the second one. They were down to one second, and Marino was changing his play. So rather than take the five yards, and sometimes you wonder again, why not take the five-yard penalty when you can get yards as quickly as Marino can gobble them up? But they spend a precious time out, and Marino is unhappy. 7-0, Miami. Yesterday, we talked with Don Shula, and I asked him, can you give me something that I haven't read about Marino? He said, well, let me put it this way. He is such a competitive quarterback, he's not afraid to make a mistake, and he's so bright, he doesn't make many anyway. That pretty well sums up Marino's talent, along with, of course, the obvious physical ability. First down... if it is indeed is a fumble by is. the Colts at the 38 yard now they're waving it off no fumble it was a very late call no fumble two feet on the ground is the NFL rule this may be one that we get a chance to look at upstairs Marino gets the ball into Hardy now let's look at Hardy one foot well all he has to do is have two feet down after controlling that football and it would be considered a reception let's take a wide look and Pretty hard to tell, basically, from either of those shots. I don't think it's the kind that would be reversed. The official's very reluctant to give the fumble in that kind of situation where it is questionable as to whether there was control of the football. Colts are good at that sort of thing, and that's testimony to their hard-hitting 14 fumble takeaways this year. Second and 10. Terrific catch by Hampton, and that ball just leading him downfield. Marino doesn't give you much of a chance to recover as a defensive back because he's so quick. His eyes moving from right to left across that defensive backfield, and when he decides to throw that football, watch him. Just bingo. Looks to the outside, looking straight down the field, and when he looked to the outside, the ball was in the air perfectly thrown. He throws the ball on those patterns down the hash marks. Well, Dan Fouts, uh, he uses that same kind of a boy, they get the ball right where it has to be. This is Stratford, the rookie down to the 20-yard line. Jerome Sally, the former Giant, trailing the play, makes the tackle. Four yards on the play. Both of these teams defensively had good tune-ups last week. The Colts playing against Fouts and the San Diego Chargers. And, of course, in preparation for the running game, uh, the Miami Dolphins against Cincinnati and Larry Kinnebrew. So both had a tune-up that was appropriate for this game. Another penalty mistake by the Colts. Face mask. Five more Five yards down, down to the 15. Added to the run. It'll remain first down and two. George Hill, defensive coordinator. Of the Colts on the sideline. He's I said, who do you worry about? He said, hey, 13. He said, that number's been in my head all week long. Well, it's been unlucky for all the NFL opponents of Miami. 
Stratford to the 13-yard line. Krause and Robinson with the tackle. Stratford drafted in the fourth round. They liking, liking him to Morris of the Giants. He runs low. He's not tall. But he said, you know, being down nice and low is really an advantage. He said, those big guys can't see me. He said, I can get in there and hide behind that offensive line. And he's right. With that low center of gravity, does create problems. And dipping in and behind, we showed you the size of these offensive linemen on both sides. Dipping in behind those big men, he does get lost in the shuffle a little bit. 179 yards is second to Lorenzo Hampton. His 23 catches coming in led Miami. And, of course, two big plays today on the two penalties for interference on him led to that first touchdown. Bennett shifts right. Stratford at the left half back position. And on the delay, Stratford runs into a lot of blue. Don Shula. Former star running back with the blue streaks of John Carroll and drafted by the Cleveland Browns involved in a 15-player trade between Cleveland and Baltimore still matches the largest number of players shifting franchises and uh, later on in our telecast we'll show you some of the names and rather interesting names that still are prominent in the NFL game. The injury. Jerome Sally is that number 76 and with it a timeout 609 remaining in the first quarter here at Joe Robbie Stadium. There's the same group of kids. I think it's second and eight for the Dolphins and another penalty. Byron Darby number 72 jumping in to center Dwight Stevenson. Encroachment number 72. Eight contact. Well, we talked about that Still trade. As Ron Meyer sees another five marked off against him there. Of all the players that went to Baltimore, including Shula, Burt Rekachar, who later set an NFL record for the longest field goal, Carl Tassif, next to Shula, he was his college teammate and went on to Baltimore with him and is now an assistant coach. Harry Gannis, a fabled quarterback back at uh, Boston University. Cleveland got Mike McCormick, the general manager at Seattle. Tom Catlin is the defensive coordinator for the Seattle Seahawks. So those uh, names still alive, although that trade made back in 53. On second and short, Marino almost intercepted. Number 72, Darby. Planning to make amends for the penalty. The ball was right in his grasp. Darby in for Jerome Sally. Getting some flying time in there. Gets around Stevenson. Gets to the outside. Toth picks him up, but does what the instinctive defensive lineman has to do. The minute that ball is thrown, gets those hands in the air, and he's saying to himself, I could have had an interception. I could have gone for a touchdown. Well, that is a moment that you, you hate to let him go. You don't get that many in your hands. Well, he's a former tight end, so he would, knows what to do with it. Third down and two. Offsides again. Marino working that count. And the throw to James Pruitt. Oh, oh see it. that's where you miss the other Mark brother, Mark Duper, because that's the guy who would have been in there. Quick throw by Marino. But boy, Marino is really milking that count. He's got him jumping off sides all day long. Now thus far, Ron Myers Colts, their own worst enemy. Watch the throw here to Pruitt, who's so busy looking at his man downfield that he's not watching the quarterback. That's wrong. You better be ready for Marino. He's going to have that ball in the air. Oh, the five-yard penalty. Moves it inside the five. First and goal for the Dolphins. They're tough enough without giving them all oh, those penalty Oh, you can't yards. give up that kind of yardage. And there's no question, the Colts very, very tight for this game. Emotionally wrapped so tightly that they're making all kinds of errors. Twice as many yards on penalties against the Colts as Marino has been able to garner through the air. There's a touchdown to Dan Johnson. A foot injury early preseason put Dan Johnson out of the lineup. Shula activated him for this game, and he pays dividends right here very quickly. They've missed him, and boy, I tell you, Dan Marino didn't waste time. Put the ball right in his hands. He now moves a distant second from the immortal Johnny Unitas in consecutive games with a touchdown pass. Breaks the tie with Dave Craig of the Seahawks. Reves for the point after. 
Well, it's been easy for Miami in this first quarter. Made easy with the penalty breaks. 14-0 with five minutes and eight seconds still remaining in the opening quarter. Dan Johnson back with the Dolphins and quickly gets a score. Johnson will be going the other way. You saw Bruce Hardy one tight end coming left. Johnson just floating along the end line. That's Odom, number 93, the linebacker, trying to cover him. But Marino's such an accurate passer. I mean, he really has such a wonderful touch on that football that he can just hang it out there in front of the good receiver and let him catch up with it. Yeah, Merlin, we were talking about two, these two uh, outstanding players, uh, extraordinary players, Marino and Dickerson. As you see, Marino again, just that quick pop to his tight end. They have tracked each other in football. They played their final collegiate game in the Cotton Bowl, and SMU and Dickerson beat Pittsburgh and Marino 7-3. They were both number one picks in that great draft of 1983. And Ron Meyer yesterday said there's another major likeness between the two, and he, he first came up with vision. The eyes. And there's no question that it is such an incredibly important part of a quarterback's makeup. The ability to see the field, to see what is important on the field, to see the receivers, to sense the rush at the same time and not to lose concentration. For an Eric Dickerson, that vision equally important. To sense where the defensive people are and where the holes in that defense are. And Meyer said they know where all 11 players are and they feel it and therefore they avoid unnecessary hits. Bentley with another chance, his third of this first quarter. And he's dropped at the 23 yard line. Looking down at Dan Marino, watch his head after the ball is snapped here, comes back in this particular situation. There's no question he knew who he wanted first, and Dan Johnson was the first option. He was open and he got the football. Had Johnson not been open, you'd have seen Marino snap his head back to the left because I don't think anybody sees the field quicker and reacts more quickly than he does at quarterback. Well, he threw that ball in between steps. I mean, he can throw from any position, that quick release. Dickerson plowing across the 30-yard line. Jackie Ship and company. And let's go back to that interior line of the Colts and their blocking. Ray Donaldson, the center, number 53, in the Pro Bowl last year. He and Stevenson, the first two picked. Stevenson's wife was having a baby. He said, Ray, it's your turn. You go and start it out. You see the kind of play that he can put on you. Really a powerful, powerful center. Dickerson now with 24 yards in five carries. Second and short. Hogaboom. Has the first down to the far sidelines to Bill Brooks. Brooks, 21st catch of the season. He leads the Colts. Dallas has taken the early lead at New England. The Jets at Kansas City, 3-0. Buffalo, that was on a fumble return, 7-3 at Cleveland. Pittsburgh leads 3-0 against the Oilers. Detroit and Washington matching field goals. The Rams now 14-3 lead. Everett a touchdown pass in that one. Tampa Bay and Minnesota no score. Here it's 14-0 Miami with 4-14 left in the first quarter. And Hogerboom looking for a big one. He's got Brooks at the 40 of the Dolphins. First invasion of Miami territory by the Colts. A 22-yard pass. That ball kind of getting away from Hogaboom a little bit. Has thrown the ball high almost all day long. Brooks did a good job of going up to get that one. The play-action pass. And I'll tell you, with Dickerson in the backfield, if you can't freeze a defense with a play-action pass, there's something wrong. From the 40, a quickie. And that won't get much as he hits his H-back, uh, John Brandis. Number 88, his uh, first catch today in his second of the season. There's the backup quarterback now, Jack Trudeau from Illinois. Not happy to be on the bench, but I think Handler well said, hey, I've, I've got to believe that I'm good enough to play in this league. He said, I'm not going to get a chance to play today, but I'll have my chances. You've got to like him. And he has played very, very well the last three weeks. I think third ranked, if you just look at the last three weeks, in the NFL as quarterback. Dickerson met by T.J. Turner at the 33 of the Dolphins will bring up third down and three. John Offerdahl was also in on the play. 
Eric Dickerson. He, in his senior year, was third in the Heisman Trophy race behind Herschel Walker and John Elway. What a 83 class that was. When you go down the number one picks in 83, just one star after another. Of course, that was the year of the quarterback, but Dickerson Great. and Kurt Warner weren't too bad Great right defensive back. players. Ronnie Lott, uh, uh, easily, Kenny Easley up in Seattle. Hogaboom has an open man, Murray, and Walter Murray from the University of Hawaii finally pushed out of bounds inside the 20. A 15-yard gain as the Colts come up with a big play on third and three. Rough William on Justin. the sideline for those photographers on that one as uh, Murray ended up tangled up with a few of the men with their shutters. Say cheese, huh? Lots of room on the outside. 49, Judson, William Judson over to give him the shove, but lots of room for Murray. Deepest penetration by the Colts, trying to cut into the 14-0 deficit. Dickerson hit at the line of scrimmage and still manages three or four. Offerdahl again with Turner. And as Offerdahl goes to that defensive huddle, he's back uh, in the lineup after a very severe muscle, shoulder, arm, muscle. You said well, you looked bicep. at the... I, I asked him yesterday about that injury. Rolled up his sleeve and two very ugly scars. The bicep torn right away from the bone. They had to go in and surgically reconnect it. Well, I'll tell you, he's back, and he is so important to this Miami defense. He's really a Jack Armstrong All-American kid. Hogaboom looks off and then hits Bentley, a good receiver, down at the eight-yard line. Looks to be a first down for Ron Myers. Indianapolis Colts and a good toss there. He led Bentley perfectly. We talked about the eyes of the players. Well, I'll tell you, there are a few eyes you'll look at, too. A coach like Ron Meyer has a way of making that eye contact. And even when you're on the field, you know where his eyes are. He was pleased there. Hogaboom used his eyes well. Looking downfield to freeze that defense at the last second, turning outside for that pass. First and goal for the Colts at the eight. Dickerson to the four-yard line. Now check that. It's Albert Bentley in there. It gets it to the four-yard line. Second and goal here in Miami. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, watch Cornelius Bennett, the newest Buffalo Bill on this play. Kevin Mack of the Browns carries. Bennett drags him down. Mack loses the ball. Mark Kelso picks it up for Buffalo and gallops 57 yards for a touchdown. But the Browns immediately answer with a score of their own and lead 10-7 early in the second. Thank you, Bob. Here it's second and goal from the four for the Colts, trailing 14-0. Dickerson looking for a hole and has it for a touchdown. Eric Dickerson scores for the Colts. Sliding over inside the left side of that big offensive line behind Chris Hinton and Ben Utt. The center moving over there, Ray Donaldson. And Dickerson just uses his power. Nice cut, square to the line. Well, I tell you, you'd rather tackle that man when he's going sideways, but Dickerson knows how to use his strength. <laughs> Ron Meyer giving the officials a little help. He said, I know what my hands are supposed to do on that one. He did that a lot for Dickerson when they were in a partnership at SMU. Meyer, the head coach, and Dickerson part of that uh, Pony Express backfield. Dean Biasucci with a try for point, and it's 14 to 7 now, Miami's lead. 77 yard drive in 10 plays, four minutes consumed, and Eric Dickerson's initial touchdown as a Colt is from four yards out. Well, who are you going to vote for uh, in our contest today? Merlin Olson, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, Gail Sayers, O.J. Simpson, and others. Now, I have to ask a question, Dick. Is it on the basis of their entire career or in their prime for one game or one season? Well, I think it's career, but let's just take for one season. One season. Well, my vote it's... changes. If I have to vote for one season, it's Sayers, because I don't think uh, anybody that I ever faced, and I played against uh, all of those listed there, uh, 
I don't think anyone impressed me more than Sayers. But if I if I'm voting for a for a season or for a career, it's Jim Brown out of that list. Now I got to tell you, after watching Dickerson for a couple of years, he's pretty close to the top of my list. Well, look at his credentials. They're the most rushing yards in a season all time. And Eric Dickerson, who's only been in the league four years, has three of the top eight seasons running the football. The other guy that goes on that list, if you look at one season, would be Earl Campbell. When Campbell came into the league, I'll tell you, I, I don't think I've ever seen more people run over and stomped on than were stepped on and maimed by Earl Campbell. 50 cents it will call you to make your vote. You can't vote for anyone specific other than those four. Any others just go into that general category of others, and the money from the calls will be donated to charity, and we'll announce the winner on NFL Live later this afternoon on the Budweiser postgame show at 4 o'clock. Six touchdowns for Sayers one day in San Francisco. I think what an incredible day. Oh. Very short kick that Dan Johnson will field at the 19. That was like a wedge shot, and Johnson returns to the 29. Is that Dickerson's hand we're looking at? It is. It is Dickerson's hand. And, of course, uh, one of the things you'd be concerned with as you see them applying ice, that's uh, you'd like to have that hand firmly wrapped around the football. It was a Dickerson fumble in the final minutes last week that denied these Colts what they thought was going to be a certain win over the San Diego Chargers. Four minutes to go, and the Colts lost it down inside the five-yard line. The Chargers marched it down and broke the 13-all tie with a field goal, but Vince Abbott to win it. Final seconds of the first quarter. Lorenzo Hampton hammered at the 31-yard line. Donnell Thompson, or check that, Harvey Armstrong, 79, and Barry Kraus, 55, with a tackle. Dan Johnson and Troy Stratford come in for Miami. Hampton and Hardy out with 22 seconds showing on the clock. Touchdown pass, Marino to Johnson. Hampton, six-yard run. The Miami scores. Dickerson counters with a four-yard run for the Colts. Only touchdown. Stratford. Fumbles the ball, and it's picked up by home. It might have been John Hand of the Indianapolis Colts. It's the Colts ball down at the 26-yard line. It was Hand, former number one pick from Alabama. What are the no, Armstrong. It's 79, not 78. Armstrong gets it. Armstrong quickly in there. One of the things you look for on a good defensive team, alertness. Very, very alert play by Armstrong. Saw that ball pop loose right there. It's 93. Odom that broke it loose. And then... Seven Miami, but the Colts now with a break have a chance to tie it. Eric Dickerson, of course, so much has been written about that enormous trade, all the draft choices the Rams got. Uh, when you read the list, all those number ones and number twos, what was your thought? My thought very simply was that if I were the man who'd made that trade and I were betting that heavily on the legs of a running back who's in his fifth year, I would build a chapel in my house <laughs> and spend a lot of time in that chapel. <laughs> Hoping that Dickerson stays healthy. Well, I'll tell you, he has managed to stay healthy and, of course, has proved his worth here today with a touchdown run as we look at the first quarter stats and as you would expect passing yardage in favor of the Miami Dolphins that wasn't though it no, wasn't. wasn't either was it the Colts had the passing yardage well the touchdowns on the passing side are in favor of the Miami Dolphins on the fumble recovery it's Hogaboom going to work for the Colts good protection goes underneath to Dickerson to the 20-yard line and a pickup of seven Dickerson's first catch of the game Dickerson can catch the ball effectively. Not as concerned about catching the football as he is about running it. But he does have good hands. And of course, when you can throw him the ball, that's like a long handoff. From the 20 yard line, trailing 14 to 7. Going for Brooks, incomplete, and a flag down as I think we may have offensive interference on Brooks. Well, you that or an early block or penalty on Judson, who's just shaking his head. 
I think it's against Judson. It looks like it is against Judson. Listen to this crowd. If you just looked at the last part of that play. Defense. At the very last part of this play, as you watch Brooks in isolation, you'll see Brooks fighting through. But there's Judson pushing him to the outside, and then Brooks trying to fight through Judson to get to the ball. The official deciding that it was Judson who had fouled first. Don Shula is irate. He came all the way down the sidelines and got the attention of the official and then waved both arms at him as if to say, that is a terrible call. Listen to the crowd now. Touchdown, Brooks, and another flag down against Judson as Hogeboom hits Brooks and a chance to tie it for the Colts, unless that flag is against Indianapolis. A very physical game being played back and forth between the two, and it looks like Judson again is going to be the culprit. Pass interference, defense number 49 is declined. Touchdown. Meanwhile, Bill Brooks from Boston University, a school that produced another fine wide receiver, Reggie Rucker, one of our NBC commentators. Excellent pass, just a little slant inside, and Judson had lost position, tried to get a bump right at the last minute. Didn't matter. Pass was completed in the end zone in spite of it. The Asuchi, the point to tie. We have a new game, just as all five AFC Eastern teams are, well, they're like bad golfers. It's all fours <laughs> in the AFC East. We're even here in Miami. You know, there's nothing like a win. A Ford in your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste. And by RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson and Don Shula. Oh, his collar is red as he uh, burns the ears of that side judge who made the two interference <laughs> He's calls. He's making his case down there <laughs> with two uh, flags on Judson just a moment ago. Shula extremely unhappy with the way those calls were made. At the Colts capitalizing on the fumble recovery at the Miami 27 and Hogaboom to Brooks a seven yard score as you see the strength of the wind and it's tied at 14 all with less than a minute gone in the second quarter. Troy Stratford and Scott Schwedes are deep for Miami. Breeze picking up here that will raise havoc with the kicking game and also can cause problems in the passing game as well. Again, the kick is very short. Stratford at the 14. And is out across the 30-yard line before June James IV can make the tackle. Here is that interference call, that the first of the two interference calls. There you saw the bump, the initial bump. But it's, I think what Shula saw was the second part of that play with Brooks trying to fight his way over the top of Judson, who by that time had position. But I think the penalty had already been called on Judson, who was well beyond the five-yard distance. There's Gary Hogaboom as his first touchdown pass since returning to the lineup. Woody Bennett, the veteran, boom, runs into a man and stays on his feet to the 35-yard line. Dwayne Beckett and Cliff Odom, two backers and a little extra. Ronnie Lee in there, a little scuffling with Donnell Thompson, number 99. Here are the two quarterback comparisons. We looked just a moment ago at the first quarter stats and Hogaboom with the advantage in yards and completion. Of course, everyone expecting uh, Dan Marino to have that. Marino has touchdowns, but does not have, and of course has a couple of big penalties that I think would take him over the 100-yard mark if those had been completed. Now the Dolphins with a quick 14-0 lead. Watch the Colts answer with two touchdowns. Lorenzo Hampton Ooh. right into the arms of Cliff Odom, who led the Colts 
picks and tackles the last two years and is second behind Dwayne Pickett this year. And that was a big hit from the man who graduated from Texas Arlington. He's the only one of those linebackers that's not a first-round choice and for the last two years, as you mentioned, has led them in tackles. That's got to be a real point of pride to say, hey, I may not have the pedigree, but here's the kind of play I can put. Look at that helmet rolling off. Boy, he really put a stick on Woody Bennett. Well, he didn't exactly go unnoticed. The Browns picked him in the third round in 1980, but he is uh, one well, of those high-priced first-rounders. Third and three. Hand off to Stratford, back to Marino. The flea flicker wide open is through it, and he can't hang on at the 20-yard line. Well, we talked about the loss of Mark Duper who was injured last week against San Diego. That would have been his route. And Pruitt, while he is a sensational talent, does drop more than Duper. I think he felt Mike Pryor, number 39, bearing down on him. Watch this play. A little handoff inside. A little razzle-dazzle. Looks like a run. Ball tossed back. Pruitt, wide open. But watch Mike Pryor. Oh, we're not going to see it. We'll go back and get it momentarily. Oh, does Roby hit a beautiful spiral to Brooks at the 15? 20 and down at the 23. Renee here's, Thompson made the tackle. Here's the last part of that play. Watch number 39, Mike Pryor, closing in on Pruitt. And I think Pruitt is looking at him. Took his eyes momentarily off that ball. And I think Mark Duper might have had it. Time out. Colts have the ball. Want to see me lift an oven and refrigerator with one hand? And in 80 degrees here in South Florida. Uh, Indianapolis Colts down quickly 14-0 have rallied the tie and now have the ball at their 23-yard line with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Eric Dickerson, the sole running back behind quarterback Gary Hogaboom. Dickerson trying to get outside and he's dangerous out there and was one block shy of really ripping off a big one. He's out to the 36-yard line, a gain of 13. Let's go back very quickly to that last play. We mentioned the absence of Mark Duper and a pass that should have been caught by James Pruitt. Well, this is this is the this is the last play. That Eric Dickerson using that great speed and the great vision to see the opening outside. You can't overplay the defense against Eric Dickerson. And, of course, when he picks up that kind of yardage, that defense has to tighten in on the running game. That opens up some passing lanes. Dickerson, this way. Look out. To the 42-yard line, a pickup of about six, maybe seven. Let's go back to that Dan Marino reaction. Marino, a leader who knew that that ball was in the hands. He's already heading down for the huddle. And right then, he's upset. The reason he's upset is that ball should have been caught by Pruitt. Again, Pruitt, hearing footsteps, he's got to concentrate on that football, took his eye off of it, and it bounced away. He might have been complaining about the sun, too. He did look back into the sun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think Don Schiller would have heard? Now the razzle-dazzle the other way, and then they throw in complete to Tim Sherwin. So it was designed to go downfield to Bentley. But when the Dolphins reacted well, and this is a play that uh, worked well two weeks ago against the Jets, very big play for them against the Jets. John Becker, their offensive coach, like the Dolphins, likes to have a few gimmicks in and likes to have a few opportunities to, to fool a defense. This Miami defense getting stronger in the way they are able to stay in position. They're doing a much better job of being in the right place than they did early in the year. Albert Bentley is the running back. Beach in motion. Boom, drills it complete to Matt Booza, number 85, who caught 71 passes last year. Former Cal Bear picks up 13. Timing of play is so important. Number 81, Matt Beach, the tight end. Now watch him come in. Watch him tap Hogaboom here. The reason for that is Hogaboom is trying to set the cadence so that he can get everybody in the right position. Beach headed outside. Hogaboom knows how many seconds it takes to get him out there. And, of course, Beach is out there to overload that side of the offense where the ball was thrown. And he drew two men to him. They were looking for the short pass, and that opened up things for Booza. And a first down at the Miami 45. Flag down and a quick toss to 
to Tim Sherwin, the H-back, and Hogelboom's sharpness, he has really honed it, hasn't he? Since the early part of the game, when he threw quite badly and was overthrowing quite a bit, Hogelboom has sharpened it up now to where he is laying that ball in there very nicely. Five more yards penalized are the Colts. Or they have had their trouble with penalties, and of course, that is that's the way to kill a good drive. Five, five yards, still first down. Well, Matt Boo's a little eager to get off into that pass route, and Mark Brown playing on the outside, right-hand side. Nobody even blocked him that time. Hogaboom had to throw that ball and get it out of there before he got ambushed on the inside. A reminder to our viewers, we'll be selecting our Budweiser Most Valuable Player again today. as it went through the hands of Walter Murray, number 86. Three Dolphins surrounding the ball as it fell harmlessly. A little fisticuffs going on. Mark Brown, 51. A little swat. I'm surprised the flag didn't drop in that situation. Brown, the leading tackler from Miami, and the Dolphins raving about his play this year. They feel he's been playing at a Pro Bowl level. Playing outside, and he seems to be very, very comfortable. Said, if I can keep it up the way I'm going now, there's no reason why I can't be in that Pro Bowl game. Well, I think the Dolphins agree. Second and 15. Bentley in the backfield. They throw wide open to Brooks to the 39-yard line. That'll be four yards shy of a first down. William Judson and Paul Langford made the tackle. Boy, Brooks has had four catches already. Brooks, a control receiver, good feet, good roots, good discipline. Hogeboom looking downfield. We, we've had a chance to watch the quarterback's eyes a great deal, and Hogeboom locked in on that particular play. Did not spend any time looking anywhere but over at Brooks. You do too much of that, you get yourself in trouble. And as you may recall, ticketed for two interference calls earlier. They know they've got the isolation one-on-one. -on -one. Hokaboom just trying to set it up on the outside. Judson, boy, and I'll tell you, he reached early on that. That looked more like a penalty than the other one that they uh, tell you, didn't like. It's, it's got to be such an awful experience to be out there as a cornerback all alone, man-on-man, -man, by yourself against a receiver to know that ball is in the air. But, uh, an official standing right there with his eyes on you. Stark will try to just uh, pooch this one downfield. The line of scrimmage is only the 39. Schwedes. Good play by Schwedes. To the 26-yard line. A good return. So there's only a 13-yard difference in the line of scrimmage from where uh, the Colts have it and where Two. Miami now will start. Two poorly hit punts by Stark so far in this game. to four years, the running back they've talked about, Eric Dickerson, we're talking about all the greatest in the history of this game. Uh, boy, you think of guys like Hugh McElhinney, he not even mentioned. Who would you pick then if you're going to vote for Well, on the, list, on the list that we had, uh, I think my pick for a career would be Jim Brown and had some of the same tools, in fact, a lot of that same balance and speed and strength that Dickerson showed. Troy Stratford, who had fumbled, had set up the tying touchdown for the Colts. Spinning outside on that little swing for a gain of about six. There are the phone numbers. Again, it costs you uh, half a dollar. Four, and then if you don't like those four and want to vote for somewhere else, you can't vote specifically. They all are going to be lumped in the others category. Bob Trumpy is going to give his pick, and uh, Bob Costas undoubtedly a rebuttal <laughs> at halftime of NFL Live. Woody Bennett across the 35-yard line, close to a first down. Donnell Thompson with a tackle, along with Willie Tellis. Cleveland now has opened a 10-point lead against the Bills. Washington leads by a touchdown. Heavily favored at home. 
Rams by four. Tampa Bay an underdog leading at Minnesota. It is a first down for Miami. Marino using the measurement timeout to talk with Shula along the sidelines. Shula talked about Marino coming with so many of the tools intact, but he said the place that he has grown the most is in the mental aspects of the game, learning how to use what he has offensively and how to work a defense. Almost a one-handed stab by Mark Clayton as Marino shooting that ball downfield. There were pressure from Cooks and Thompson, Ron Meyer's defensive front. Here's the quote you referred to earlier, Dick, and Meyer, uh, with great respect for Shula and these Dolphins, and really, I think, has pointed to this game and to this match as a way of testing the growth of his Colt team. And he really believes that, that they have made tremendous progress, which they have, but he wants that final step. Well, one thing for sure, he won't have the snowplow out as he did. No, 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 he's apologized for that one. As he did when they beat Miami a few years ago. Up the middle goes Stratford, and a penalty flag is down. Krause and Bickett, the linebackers, make the tackle of the Miami runner. No, no flag. I Looked like a flag down. <laughs> Maybe someone's hat on the ground. Brings up third down. I understand that Doug Williams is quarterbacking the Redskins today and has thrown a touchdown pass that gave the Washington that 10-3 lead against Detroit. Look at that, over 50% on third down for Miami, and that's second down. only to Seattle. Oh, intercepted. Great timing by Freddie Robinson, who shot up from his safety position. And boy, he was at full speed had he been able to wrap that one up. You could hear it hit his shoulder pads. You'll look from behind. Marino looking left. Looking right down the middle and quickly throws that football. And Robinson, who had just kind of hung for a minute, I think anticipating that play, almost got the interception. Roby roots it high and deep to Brooks at the 13. And Bill Brooks out of bounds at the 22. 45-yard punt, 9-yard return. So Marino starts slowly in this half, 4 for 12. I mean, he rarely, rarely is ever under 50% for a game. I think it's only happened four times in his career. I don't know why the roar. It's a penalty, I think, is going to force a re-kick. Oh, that'll give a first down if there's a penalty. At the line of scrimmage. That's right. It's less than five on the call if we have an offsides against. Offside defense. Yeah, five yard right. penalty. And that will be a first down. down. Four and a half. It'll make it a first down. And I'll mark that play. Another costly penalty for the Colts. Boy, that's just like a turnover. You're going to get the ball back. And suddenly, you make the mistake that hands the ball right back to Marino and the Dolphins. Marino's ball at the 47 and a half yard line. I'll tell you, you don't want to give him any more chances than you have to. Lots of time and underneath the Stratford oh. fumbled again and picked off in the air. It appeared by Bickett. And Dwayne Bickett, who has good speed, is all the way down to the 26 yard line. The Colts have another turnover. Cliff Odom stripping the ball away and Dwayne play one hammers the receiver and knocks that ball away that's 93 Odom right there watch him strip that ball underneath that ball bounced actually did hit the ground so the ball required to have been possessed by the receiver but Bickett timing it so beautifully I'll tell you some people just do have that nose for the football George Hill and defensive coordinator over to congratulate Dwayne Bickett. When we look at it again, was there enough possession to make that a fumble? And they're obviously looking at it on the uh, replay. Well, a part of that that is crucial is that the ball did touch the ground. So it's important to know whether the ball was fully in the possession of the receiver at the time that it was tapped. Here it is. He's got it. Yeah, I 
would say he he did. Well, he's got it. That's Tony Nathan, number 22. And he's got to have two feet on the ground. Let's go back and look at it again. I'm not so sure he had possession of it, Dick. Well, obviously, they're listening to the instant replay booth as they survey the play again and uh, help with the decision. Now, watch him take the football here. Both feet are down. Two feet are down before the ball is uh, from that angle is free. You, now, we, if we have another angle, of course, that's part of the problem here. You don't have enough cameras to show all the angles. <laughs> Well, that's not an easy job, even at slow motion, and it has to be clear. Upon further review by instant replay, the play stands as called, intercepted. These fans are not happy by that, but the replay official must be able to say this information, visual information, clearly indicates that it should be reversed. But didn't Jim Tunney say interception hold? It was not an interception. If anything held, it was a fumble. Because the ball did hit the ground. That was apparent. Complete to Booza. And Matt Booza out of bounds at the Miami 18-yard line. William Judson. They're really working on Judson's side of the field. Miami has certainly strengthened their defense up front. Linebacking play is... Much, much better than it was earlier in the year. But let's go back and look one more time at that play. Now, that if Tunney is repeating what was said from up above, they're saying that this ball did not touch the ground. Well, that's past history now. So noisy that Pat Beach trying to help out with the audible call. It's Dickerson to the seven-yard line in the first and goal for the Colts. But Brown and Glenn Blackwood, two smaller men in the secondary, and they have to give up your body when you bring down Eric Dickerson's 217 pounds, and I think he's heavier than that. You whistle for a lot of your friends when you get a hold of him and just try and hang on. Man, this first half has been loaded with tough calls by the official. 14 all the score with 525 remaining in the half. Fogelbaum overshoots Brooks on the goal line. Again, working on Judson, who's got to be wondering when they're going to give me a break and go somewhere else for a change. It looked like there was a real problem. Hogeboom called an audible, had to turn around and yell the audible back to Dickerson. Lots of confusion. This Miami home field advantage making itself assertable here. This is a loud stadium by configuration, and they're trying to make Hogeboom pay for that right now. Dickerson manages only a couple to the five. T.J. Turner and company. We'll watch Dickerson take the ball, break up inside behind the pulling guard. 66 salt, 64 up, actually pulling from the other side. You see Mark Brown exhorting the fans to come on and get some more noise, make it a little tough. Sends in five defensive changes looking for the pass. To Beach, incomplete. Green and Sosha pressuring Hogaboom, and on comes the field goal unit for the Colts. And Biasucci, who has hit on 10 of 12 this year, will try a fairly short one. 22 or 23 yards, depending on the spot. Suchi, just a little wedge chip type kick and punches it in from 22. So the 
Bickett fumble recovery and return sets up a field goal. So the Colts have manufactured 10 points out of two Miami fumbles. And the lead at 17-14. A call that we still did not quite understand, but a call that was allowed to stand. Still couldn't quite tell. Maybe we can find out from the NFL whether they ruled this as a fumble or an interception, but it sure hit the ground. I don't see how it can be an interception. And from that angle, difficult to tell whether or not uh, Tony Nathan, who has just been activated, the veteran running back, whether he had control long enough. But we've had two calls right on that border. Well, right on the edge. And, of course, we have to... We'd have to say again that in order to overrule a call on the field, there has to be real clear evidence, visual evidence, that the call was incorrect. And when they're that close, pretty hard to do. But the confusion came, and, and it may have just been a, a mistake, a verbal mistake by Tony, but he referred to it as an interception, which from the replay obviously was not the case. It only could have been a fumble recovery and return. Nevertheless, it's 17-14 and Biasucci to kick off with 4.19 left and a rather interesting first half. Well, a ruling by the NFL, completed pass and fumble. So now it's now we have the information, Dick. Troy Stratford fighting his way out to the 18-yard line. Chris Good, 37, was the first to make contact for the Colts. Well, Dan Marino has made his reputation on his ability to explode down the field with this offense here in Miami. I think this is a good opportunity if you're a Miami fan, if you're Don Shuley, you say, okay, let's see it, Dan. 4.08 to left to go and a half. They need to get it moving. Isn't that a redundancy, Bob Trumpy <laughs> speaks up? <laughs> he has a problem telling you how he feels about things, doesn't he? Yeah, they'll have some interesting comments. We're certain at halftime, so stay with us. with a tackle. Clayton from Louisville. What a steal he was in the eighth round. The 223rd player selected back in 1983. A big basketball fan. Oh, he's talking about Denny Crum's Cardinals. He said, we're going to be tough again this year. Watch out. Well, he likes to go into the air, too. He can really sky for that ball if it's thrown above him. Hardy and Johnson, two tight ends, single back is Nathan Marino and Robinson breaks up the play intended for Bruce Hardy. Another good play by Freddie Robinson, timing his movement, gets to the outside, looks like he had a chance to bat that ball a little bit. And he was a sixth round pick, so a very good selection by the Colts last year. Dolphin possessions today starting so strongly with the benefit of some penalties, two touchdowns, the first two drives, and then things have kind of gone awry. Two turnovers, critical turnovers, and of course, both leading to points at the other end of the field. Complete to Nathan at the 41, short of the first down, will bring up a third down and about three. Nesby Glasgow on the coverage. Doug Williams has thrown another touchdown pass. He has one to Lions and one to Gary Clark. And Washington now leads the Lions 17 to three. Jim Jensen, crash, number 11, into that backfield has gone from the status as the backup fourth quarterback to a very critical third down and productive third down runner and receiver. You see him standing right next to Marino there. He likes to catch that football. He says, he, he said, when I'm out there catching the ball, he said, then it's one-on-one. -on -one. And he said, I should win those one-on-one -on -one contests. Watch him here. Does a good job of getting himself open. And there he is. He beats the one-on-one -on -one man and gets the extra yardage. So he did it. Talk about hitting a man in the numbers. That was that Marino toss. Offside. Boy, Marino has their number today with 
with that snap count. They're so eager to get the rush on him. He's barking that count. You saw it on Al Johnson jumping off. No penalty. Two minute warning. Oh. Two minutes. <laughs> well, well, the Colts uh, survived so another five yard penalty. You know what? They might have jumped when they heard the gun. <laughs> that, that'll make a jump. So two minutes remain in the first half. Liberty Mutual Insurance presents Legends of the Game. Why he really felt that he had suckered that defense of the Colts offside. And he's using a count, a, a delayed count, a staggered count to get him. Play action, Marino, down the middle. What a catch by Bruce Hardy. Oh, my. Cliff Odom, number 93, trying to cover Hardy. Such a dependable receiver. You'll see Hardy right side of your screen, just looping around the linebacker. What a great catch as he stretched all the way to the ground. Marino looking for six. And the ground. broken up again by, no, not Ross Robinson this time, but Nesby Glasgow gets a hand in there. When you say he's using his count, watch his head now. Watch him. He's got him going. He's got the hut, and then he comes back and gets the ball snapped. Marino was very angry. This is the this is the what Marino was going through right after the play. What do you mean there's no penalty on that play? He thought he had it, but what had happened is that the two-minute warning had been called at that minute, at that time. But what he's doing, Dick, he's give, give you a height, a really a hard one, and your anticipation sends you into that secondary, and then he'll get the ball snapped, and you're in trouble. One minute, 32 seconds left in the half. receivers are coming up with spectacular receptions. First Hardy, and now Pruitt from Cal State Fullerton, a one-hand stab. Well, I guess that's really the story for Pruitt, the great catch on this play. You saw him miss one earlier that he should have caught. A little inconsistency. That's what you get out of a young receiver, but boy, he did do a great job of flagging that ball down. And a big game at Cincinnati, his best as a Dolphin last week. First down at the Colts 15-yard line. He said it's been a roller coaster season for him, and well, it's been a roller coaster game so far for him. A little draw to Nathan, who has nearly five yards before Barry Krause can wrap him up. A couple of former Bama stars. Dallas, that's a very important game for Miami. Of course, one of the teams uh, four and four. New England trails at the half. The Jets and Kansas City tied at the half. Working quickly. Throws that one away. That gives us a chance to look at the other scores. Doug Williams quarterbacking the Redskins with a 17 to 3 lead. Of course, we'll have the top plays and scores, details, and debate at halftime on NFL Live. Seven defensive backs on the field for the Indianapolis Colts. They, they do something interesting. They usually end up rushing a couple of linebackers on the outside, keeping only two defensive linemen on the field. Jensen, the lone back with Marino on third and six. One minute, one second left in the half. Wide open is Freddie Banks. Is it a touchdown? Yes. to be such an exciting moment and a very heady play by Banks as he stretched out and before his legs hit the ground, hung that football out over the goal line and I guess the officials stopping, well, thought they were going to stop it and review it, but apparently not. From Liberty University where his number 81 was retired, picked by the Browns two years ago in the eighth round, Fred Banks' first catch as a Dolphin is a touchdown. Reves tries to make it 21-17. the 
the Dolphins regain the lead. Apparently, the officials were checking the tape and did reconfirm the touchdown. You see the stretch right there. All he has to do is break the plane of the goal line before those knees hit the ground. Really, an outstanding play by Peggs. <laughs> and Shula said, now that's what I expected. <laughs> you know, that was the kind of uh, play you saw in a 19... Football, where you know the last play he runs all the full length of the field and then dives whether it's tackled or not so the ball just does nose over the goal line well banks a uh, pretty good piece of acting there and he gets six points for it all and marino doing exactly what he's made a reputation on down the field very quickly three minutes and 20 seconds scoring with the pass well i don't think we misled our audience when we got them to focus their eyes on Marino and Dickerson at the beginning of this day. Truly extraordinary talents. Marino with two touchdowns. He's averaging three touchdowns a game this year. And his touchdown to interception ratio is just unbelievable. With two touchdowns today, a 17 for the season, only four intercepted, and three of the four interceptions were tipped balls by that's, his receiver. That's what's so amazing. And you know what's, what makes that statistic even more amazing to me, Dick, is the fact that he absolutely refuses to be sacked. And that means that he has got to make such quick decisions on where to throw that football. And very often, that means throwing into coverage, which he, which he's not afraid to do. If a guy is covered, he may still throw the football there. But he throws it so well that it's not intercepted. You look at the list of the best ever, and Marino way out in front, and many quarterbacks will judge themselves on a career to have more touchdowns than interceptions. It's a pretty good uh, uh, mark. To, it certainly to, is. Because a lot of, there are a lot of fine quarterbacks that don't ever get above 500, don't ever get above the one that you saw on that last panel. Here comes Bentley. yard line goes Albert Bentley so with 40 seconds left in the half the Colts are in excellent field position trailing by four Albert Bentley making his own statement here today hey don't forget about me all this talk about Eric Dickerson Bentley uh, having a very very fine year before Dickerson arrived still will be a major force for this team they really like him in there especially on the passing game because he's such a fine receiver and also blocks so well in pass protection and he played here at the University of Miami in fact it was Bentley that scored that touchdown to give the Hurricanes the 83 championship on the upset Nebraska in the Orange Bowl and there's Bentley right on cue but he can't get out of bounds so the Colts will have to spend one of their timeouts at the 32 second mark David Fry a free agent pick uh, by Atlanta out of Purdue made the tackle it's hot it's and I'm sure the same can be said Merlin Olsen for the Jets and uh, New, New England, England certainly yeah, Buffalo Buffalo all really starting their season today there are eight games to go everyone you just wash out the rest we're all even at four and four it's from now on the season really counts tied for not only first but last and <laughs> somebody's going to end up last both these teams realizing that the opportunity is here today to take that first step away from the pack 21 17 the score Miami leads you see the time remaining two timeouts left for the Colts they're on the Miami 47 Drilling too wide, Murray goes to the ball, but incomplete. We've focused a lot of attention on Dan Marino. Gary Hogeboom certainly has had a fine first half, and I can see why Ron Meyer is so pleased to get him back into the lineup. Seems to have very strong control in the huddle. You watch him down there. He is really a leader. Now the Cowboys picking him out of Central Michigan in the fifth round. Chippewa. In 1980, you bet. One of the fighting Chippewas from Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Actually, he grew up in Grand Rapids. about 32 yards on the fly from the deep back judge. That shows how the officials will help each other. Pass interference. Defense. The official looking straight in from the side could not tell whether there was interference. The official deep downfield had the better angle. And here comes the flags. Meyer saw it. It's like a parachute. First down, and that's the key, and it stops the clock with 21 seconds. 
They're out of field goal range. Biasucci's longest this year, 50. Draw play, Bentley, lots of running room. And a good call. Timeout will be used at the 14-second mark, and the ball at the 30. That would make a field goal try 40, 57 yards. So they've got to get another 10 yards for number four, Biasucci. Let's see, 47 yards yeah, currently. Be 47 yards. Yeah, we could, they, they might squeeze that one. They'd like about another 10 yards to get him comfortably under range. Now here are the discussion involves the fact there is just one timeout left and whatever they're going to do don't give up the football and be sure you call time if you're in the field of play to get that field goal unit on john becker the offensive coordinator will be relaying his message through chip myers onto the sideline Dickerson checking into the ball game. Of course, in this situation, you've got to keep an eye on him. Maybe not so much as a runner, but perhaps as a receiver out wide. They'd love to throw him that little pass and isolate him out there and then let him get what he can and go out of bounds. Bentley stays in as well. He's the wing on the right side. And it's Bentley's Bentley. Ball. And he gets that 10 yards, make it 11 yards down to the 19 with nine seconds left we'll see as the season goes on a great deal more of dickerson and bentley in the same backfield bentley perhaps being used as denver used steve sewell over the past few years coming from that h-back position running the ball or getting downfield as a runner or blocking here he comes on a little delayed play back inside i think everyone looking either for the pass or for dickerson and they were able to pop it right up the middle put themselves in field goal location now let's see if Biasucci's leg is strong enough to get it through oh, Harry, uh, gary hogaboom is still in there and with nine seconds left this is a bit of a gamble you see how the cowboys gil brandt who's masterminded their draft for so many years said hogaboom was a lot like roger staubach in college he won games in the last two minutes that's why we drafted him and it's that same quality of course that applies to dan marino in that last few uh, minutes to be able to get the field down the team downfield in a hurry well you certainly don't want to get the sam white award here <laughs> so, <laughs> there's biasucci he's saying hey i want the shot i want the chance now this is a little risky nine seconds left no timeouts remaining but they're going to go for it all and uh a flag again was intended for Brooks, double teamed, and Renee Thompson guilty of the foul. This will be interesting because if it's interference, well, it may be against Murray. And from his reaction, he ripped off his helmet and started to bark at the officials. Well, again, the question would be asked, was the ball catchable? Was there interference? Let's let Jim Tunney sort it out for us. It's Defensive interference. Five yard penalty, but with three seconds left, it really is academic. The Colts are have, will have to go for the field goal now. Well, don't be so certain. We thought they were going to do that a moment ago. Now, that ball clearly thrown in a position where it couldn't have been caught. Illegal contact. Five yards is okay. penalized All the right, so it's shot. not interference, it's Just contact. Down. That's First and ten. anything beyond five yards, stay on the field. and. You saw Shula go back to Tom Oliudati, his defensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, and say, "What is going on here?" Oliudati has done a good job of improving their defense, but they have been cooked a bit today by these Indianapolis Colts. Yasuchi, who has a 22-yard field goal, this one will be 32. close out this first half high scoring it has been with another three points 32 yards for Biasucci Ron Meyer Don Shula leave they started today four and four at the halfway mark of this one they're separated by only a single point the Dolphins 21 and the Colts 20. Activities will continue in a moment with all the scores and comments. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. 
franchise history. to factor into that would be Hogeboom's performance, which is very impressive on the day. In fact, uh, certainly doing his best to stay right on track, as you see here with Marino. He is uh, 12 for 22, and, and both quarterbacks assisted by some key interference calls in the first half. Second half, do you see any change in strategies? Uh, was this about what you might have expected, Merlin, 21-20 at the intermission? Now, I expected a good ball game, and we certainly have had all of that statistics we glance down through them passing yardage and again passing yardage affected by those interference calls total yardage uh, the Colts getting the better of that because of their rushing edge the turnovers two very critical turnovers fumbles both of them by Miami both of which led to points uh, for the Colts in that first half but I would think you've got to kind of stay on track with what you started thinking about at the beginning of the day. And I would think that both defenses are talking about improving their performance. And it may well be that one of those defenses is going to take a step up and put a crimp either on Moreno, Marino or on Dickerson or on Hogaboom and take control of this ball game in the second half. Ron Meyer was very disappointed last week at home against San Diego, not taking advantage of opportunities four times inside the 20 today, and they've scored all four times. This kickoff, sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers, as Bia Succi will kick it deep to Schwedes or Stratford. Two Eastern rookies wait, and it's Stratford at the 15. And bumped out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Again, Bia Succi's uh, kickoff, the depth to be questioned. Uh, Chris Good made the tackle for the Colts, and here comes Marino and Miami. As always, so very important to get out and establish some momentum in the second half. Marino right now thinking, of, let's get something going here, and you'll see them mixing their plays well, uh, the running game along with the passing game. But if you can get a big turnover, if you can make something happen here defensively, if you're thinking along with the Indianapolis Colts, you can swing that momentum back in your direction. Woody Bennett gets the call, breaks out of a tackle, and gets out to the a gain of five before Freddie Robinson can secure the tackle. Cliff Oldham, 93 there as well. A bright aqua shoes on Woody Bennett. Purchased and sent to Dan Marino by one of the shoe companies. And uh, Marino said, he said, I just couldn't do it. He said, I couldn't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> but he found the taker right there, Woody Bennett. They were size 12s. They fit Woody, and they, they found a home right there. And it certainly had the antithesis of the Jim McMahon personality or the Brian Bosworth in Dan Marino. He does not want that kind of spotlight. Stratford reverses his field. And walks right around a couple of goals and almost makes the first down. He's to the 40 where it'll be third and a long one. Johnny Cooks on the outside doing a good job of holding his space as Bruce Hardy came out to block on him. Stratford had to cut back against the grain. A Darth Vader look to Cooks there. Number 98. Now watch him. Watch how quickly he comes up to stuff uh, Hardy back inside. There's no room on the outside for Stratford, who did an excellent job of dipping back inside and finding some room. East as the Buffalo Bills, one of those five, have now fallen behind Cleveland 24 to 7. Kozar to slaughter a 52 yard scoring pass. David Shula and Don Shula, I'm sure, have talked about what they wanted to do in this second half. They're trying to control the physical part of the game right now, coming out with their running attack, hammering a little bit, trying to establish some physical dominance on the field at the beginning of the second half. the middle with a few runs you show them what looks to be a downfield pass and then you drop it outside on the little screen Hampton doing a fine job of running and 
You mentioned a fine block by Geisler. Hampton certainly has made a great deal of progress. A real asset to this Miami Dolphin offense. And another University of Florida number one making it big in the NFL. Woody Bennett played at Miami of Florida. Short yardage. Boy, the number ones out of Florida. Of course, they have another fine team, the Gators again. They're looking for a possible bid uh, to the Aloha Bowl. You've got uh, Neil Anderson, who is emerging as a star with the Chicago Bears. John L. Williams, who compliments Kurt Warner up at Seattle. James Jones at Detroit. All number ones from Florida in the last two, three years. Second and seven. Single back set. Stratford going to throw. Yes. And completes it. Shot puts it to Bruce Hart for a game down to the 27 yard line a pickup of six the secret to any running pass whether it be by a quarterback or a running back is come to run make those defenders believe you're going to run the football a little tip here too early Stratford needs to stretch it out but well he still got it done as Hardy had found some open space Ooh, that didn't look good Hardy's knee clamped underneath him as he was tackled there he, Lucky he didn't hurt himself on that play. That pass looked like one of your knuckleballs that you throw. <laughs> just, well, it was complete. <laughs> I'm sure that's what Troy Stratford would be saying right now. Needless to say, his first NFL pass. Third and a yard and a half. Hampton fighting to the 25, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Behind John Giesler. Johnny Cooks, the tackler. Some good blocking up front by that Miami offensive line. Toth on that side over there, along with Ronnie Lee. Good job inside. At the 25, Dwight Stevenson brings them out of the huddle, the all-pro center. 21-20 Dolphins. This is the opening drive of the second half. Marino underneath the foot. Gain of about eight more. Cooks on the coverage, or maybe that's Nathan. That is Tony Nathan. Nathan caught up in the numbers game earlier in the year, but the addition of five possibilities to the roster has allowed him to rejoin the Dolphins. And, of course, uh, there was feeling that if the strike had not happened when it did, Tony Nathan might have ended up playing in Washington or somewhere else. Well, it might be a little extra use of hands on the inside by Dwight Stevenson. Dwight Stevenson on Darby. We said the best hands in the business. I, was that what we were talking about there? And it's the first down as Woody Bennett up the middle to the 13. And there's Dwight Stevenson, eighth year out of Alabama. Well, and Jerome Sally, who went out of the ball game with an injury earlier, has not returned. Of course, that means you're moving to a a backup nose tackle there. Stevenson doing a great job on him there. There's the hand strength and arm strength. You see, I just turned him around and fired him to the ground. I, he is a position and leverage blocker. I'll tell you, he just does a whale of a job in there. He speaks with his actions. Now, how do they say, when everyone starts complaining, he says, then do it. Yeah, then do it. He, well, he, he does that. Marino, plenty of time. And it's through the hands of Clayton and interference again. This time it's Willie Tullis. I don't think I've ever seen a ball game, uh, an early part of a ball game, with as many interference flags as we've had today sprinkled on both sides. Yeah, they are covering tightly both defenses. Pass interference. Defense was in the end zone. Ball in the one yard line. First down. They'll pack it down to the one yard line. Number 42, Willie Tullis. Covering on the far left-hand side of your screen. You see Marino look to his left, back to his right. And, of course, Tullis going right through Mark Clayton. And Clayton, Clayton having a bit of a conniption there until he saw the yellow laundry on the ground. Lorenzo. You can't cop up the pumpkin and expect to win football games consistently. Boy, good hitting inside. Bam, and that ball is loose.
game is brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. By the makers of new Prestone Advanced Formula, the antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. Indianapolis Colts with Miami perched on their one-yard line and four shots for a touchdown, forced a turnover, and start from their three. Dickerson lined up in the end zone. He's about seven yards off the ball. And he gives them some breathing room, about five. Let's go back to the fumble. Watch 47 Robinson. He's trying to pick at it now. Hampton in the air. Dwayne Bickett, number 50, comes up underneath. Hand and Darby up there on top. And that ball just popped loose. I think it's I think it's Darby, 72, that got a shoulder or a hand into that ball to break it loose. But that's great team defense for the Colts. Now Odom, uh, we hear from the sidelines, may have been the man. Dickerson, and of course, Miami with... Dickerson's penchant for fumbling, going after the ball, hoping to get it right back. It'll be third and short. The other scores. Battle of field goals at Kansas City, and thus far, Lowry is in the lead 9-6. Cleveland helped the advantage. Houston now in front of Pittsburgh. Lions close the gap at Washington. Minnesota now has the lead over Tampa Bay at home, and St. Louis for the first time leads the Rams. Six defensive backs for Miami. Over the middle to Beach, the tight end, and that's going to be very close to the first down. He didn't get his momentum going upfield, was running laterally, and so he may not have made it. Beach, it looked like made a mistake on that play. It looked like he had a little more yardage and then kept running laterally. May have given back a little bit of it, but I think it's at least close enough to measure and looks very close to the first down, Dick. You see number 75, one of the acting captains. It is a first down for the Colts. Chris Hinton, we've been looking at the interior line of Ron Meyer, and Hinton from Northwestern is part of the news of the day as we see the replay on this uh, catch by Beach. Look how far he was up the field had he just thrown his body forward. An easy first down, but he got thinking about extra yardage, and Lyle Blackwood, or Glenn Blackwood, not Lyle, he's not around anymore. He's done a good job of getting it down there. Dickerson. Oh. Cleverly <laughs> moving out to the 19-yard line, a pickup of about five more. Back to Chris Hitton, uh, Merlin, because he is a part of the tie back to another big trade, and that was the trade that involved Elway, who was picked number one out of the draft by the Colts, couldn't sign him. Elway eventually going to Denver, and the payoff for the Colts was Hinton, who has become a Pro Bowl tackle 75. Ron Soles, who was the number one draft pick, was now the starting right guard, and Mark Herman, the quarterback. But there's been some inflation, <laughs> as Dickerson has proved. Hogelbaum tucks it away and goes out to the 21, where he'll be three yards short of a first down. John Bosa, the rookie from Boston College, 97, putting the pressure on. Now, there you see the Elway tray, three players. And now, four years later, Eric Dickerson commands uh, more revenue. You well, still course, feel too much. I, well, I think too much. I, I, the average career in the, in the NFL, four years, a little less than that for running backs. Dickerson is in his fifth year. He's a marvelous athlete, but how many more years can you expect him to perform at that level? Here he comes, looking for the first down and gets more than that out to the 27-yard line. But you know, maybe if, if they get their opportunity, if he can lead them to a Super Bowl, if he can lead them to a championship or a couple of championships, maybe, maybe it's all worth it. I, George Allen would certainly approve, I think. <laughs> well, Eric Dickerson has not only uh, given the Colts respectability, which they were earning anyway this year, he now does give them that hope of a playoff spot. That uh, this team, and watching them today, who's to say that they aren't capable of being one of the teams to go into the postseason tournament? Hogaboom, lofting it high and incomplete to Brooks. Wow. And another flag. Oh. 
have to have a clinic after the game. I, you may see a couple of defensive uh, coordinators and, and defensive backfield coaches out there keeping their players after game today to, to give them a little clinic on coverage. Guess who it's on? Just take a guess. Uh, Judson again. I, boy, Brooks has given him fits over there all day long. How many is that? Six? Seven? Seventh pass interference Seventh of the game. Four ball. against Miami. Three of those against Judson. Pass interference, number 49, defense, first down. The official looking right straight into the contact on the on the spot. And here's here's a question being asked from Don Shula. Well, you see how he feels about mistakes. There's no mistakes being thing. made here today. No such thing as a small flaw. They're all big. How do you measure one? They're all painful and often hurtful. Dickerson has a look out. Deal. Look out. 45 yeah. and five goes down. Yeah. And there's a clip against Walter Murray, who not, well, at least a block in the back. Murray didn't need to do that. All he has to do is stand there. Dickerson is Dickerson's going to get away from the he guy. He set it up. So that'll take some big yardage away from Dickerson, who had moved about 20 yards in the play instead with the penalty. That'll bring it back almost to the line of scrimmage. A gain now of only about uh, three yards on the play. And that Holding is a... Offense, number 86, 10 yards, still first down. That's just a bad choice by Walter Murray. Watch him at the end of this play. If, if he just stands there, Dickerson will set up the block for him. Instead of that, he tries to get cute and tries to use his body in a way that's illegal there. You just barely saw it on the outside. But I'll tell you, the thing that makes Dickerson so special is that great speed and power in combination to be able to come back against the green that way. Bentley replaces him, and he gets the call, and he's out to the 47, and another flag. Well, the colors are blue and white of the Colts and aquamarine blue and orange for the Dolphins. But boy, yellow has had its uh, fair share. The yellow flags are flying. Jackie Ship, number 51, Ron, or 50, and Ron Salt, 66, exchanging pleasantries after that particular play. And Ship still talking over there to the lineman. By the way, uh, on that last run by Dickerson, called back on the penalty, he briefly was over the 100-yard mark. 10 yards, still first down. The Colts are operating without their starting right tackle, Kevin the Creature Call, the 6'7", 300-pound right tackle, probably won't play anymore today, and Joel Patton, 65, has replaced him on the right side. But that call goes against Ben Utt, who may have the shortest name in the National Football League in terms of only six letters. You have to go back to Jim Moore. Or another cold. That's not much longer than Ron Salt, though. <laughs> Good protection. Wide open downfield is Boza and a first down. It appears that the Dolphins didn't see the ball. Everyone got looking around and just rainbows right down into the arms of Boza. 27 yard gain. Well, it's right over into the turf that's occupied by number 49, William Judson. And Judson's going to be shell-shocked at this point. Over his head, not getting any help immediately from the safety. 44, Paul Lankford, actually the man who's there after the fact. Ogaboom taking a bump as he unloads that completion. Eric Dickerson back in the lineup. First down at the Miami 41. The Dolphins lead 21-20. Dickerson up the middle. Looked like he had trouble with a handoff, but was able to tuck it away and pick up two. Joe Costanza working on the statistics. Uh, Eric Dickerson, who had some yardage taken away on a penalty, is uh, moving ever closer to that century mark once again. That's just uh, his real estate. 93 yards now for Eric on 18 carries. How about Lorenzo White of Michigan State yesterday? <laughs> 56 carries, and he's carrying the Spartans to the Rose Bowl. Chris will have that for you on NBC. Ogaboom waiting. Is that a reception? And if it is, it's still the Colts ball. I think it's a reception. Now, if Miami can get there and get possession, that football belongs to them. Here is the play as the ball is thrown. 
Watch him. One, two, plenty of time. No question. Completion. Ball breaks loose. That's anybody's football. But you got to possess it before it goes out of bounds. Oh, so close. And wouldn't have that have been a wonderful way for William Judson to atone for some of his problems today? Pick that one up and go all the way down. Dickerson with flags flying again has the first down if. one of those small flaws that Shula was talking about for him to have that kind of mistake. That just really uh, is an aggravation. First down at the 25, and that unofficially puts Dickerson at the 100-yard mark on the day. And we're in the third quarter, four and a half minutes left. Hogaboom. And another flag is down. And this one may be against the Colts for offensive pass interference. Looked like a pickoff. Yep. Now, Hogaboom's chance to visit with the officials. All right. Was he saying, gee, was that a fair call? He, oh, well, maybe that wasn't what he said. No, yeah. we have good manners, those Central Michigan guys. We're very polite. Pass interference, offense, number 88, 10 yards, to a first down. A very physical game taking place in this secondary today. And uh, as I said earlier, I've never seen as many calls for interference in a single game uh, that I can remember. Well, it's not the strength of either team, the back four of the deep defense. And so... Second down and 11. Nine more for Dickerson. Oh, he is a money player. He just keeps hammering on you, too. Jets now have a four-point lead at Kansas City. Houston, Warren Moon, another touchdown pass. the tight end to the 16-yard line. Tackled by Jackie Schiff after 10 yards. Beach, who grew up in the Palouse country, Pullman, Washington, where Washington State University is located. Called, and he went to school there. His dad owned a drugstore there in Pullman. I asked him what impact Dickerson's arrival had had on him. He said, you know, those linebackers are looking at Dickerson. It's, a, it's easier for me to get off the ball these days. <laughs> and I don't blame the linebackers either. Ogabone had plenty of time, but did not like the call for the defense that he was looking at and uses one of his second half timeouts. It's 21-20 here in Miami. Never before has an antifreeze guaranteed. Beautiful day in a beautiful new stadium, Joe Robbie Stadium, 74,993 capacity. Not a sellout today. This will be the home of the Super Bowl a year from January. NBC's turn at the Super Bowl. Third and a short two. Bentley. Running wow, through what a tackle. Nice run. They had him stop right at the first down. Mark, and he just breaks out of the tackle, and Bentley with six more. That is some one-two punch, and don't forget, they've got Randy McMillan, a great runner, who was injured in an auto accident waiting to come back. They bring Booz in motion to pull a defense to the right. They run Bentley right back at the left-hand side. Get some good blocking there, but it's Bentley's quick acceleration and his opportunity to run through a tackler that got him the first down. Remember, this is a drive that started back at the three-yard line of the Colts, Dickerson. And close to a face mask as he's dropped after a yard gain. William Judson, Bob Brzezinski in on the tackle. 
Dickerson rarely is knocked back on a tackle. Most often, when you see him go to the ground, he goes forward, and very often in going forward, picks up an extra yard or yard and a half. The other thing that he does that I think is one of the reasons he's been relatively free of injuries is that you don't very often get that real solid whack on him. He has the ability to avoid that. From the eight-yard line, that's Bentley in motion. A little fake. And now the throw to Dickerson wasn't looking. That was a rather involved play, and for Dickerson, who's only been with the Colts a couple of weeks, uh, he wasn't expecting the toss. John Bosa, the number one pick of the Dolphins, number 97, finally got to Hogaboom. They call him Skybox Bosa because, as Charlie Winter said here in Miami, it cost us a couple of skyboxes to sign him. Well, he's been, he held out until he got what he wanted on the bottom line. He's had some thigh injuries that have limited his practice. He has yet to get his first sack. He's a little frustrated by that. Third and goal. The throw oh. is incomplete through the hands of Boza. And the Colts now will have to go for the field goal that would give them the lead. Now, Ron Meyer said yesterday, he said, we cannot afford to trade field goals for touchdowns. That's just exactly what they did right here. Went 89 yards from their own three to the eight of Miami. And now Biasucci will try another field goal. Looks to be 25 yards on the money. He's two for two from 22 and 32. He's had a solid year. He's now 13 for 15 attempts. And the lead changes again. Today's small cars are tough. is not what Ron Meyer wanted. He was looking for the touchdown. There are pluses in that drive, the major part being 8 minutes, 36 seconds consumed. That's 8 and a half minutes that Dan Marino and the Miami offense were not on the field. And with 1.12 left in the third quarter, the kickoff to Schwedes at the 9. Flag down. And so is the carrier Schwedes as Chris Good, number 37, John Holt, 21, in on the tackle. Really a flag mark game so far, Dick. And somebody on the Miami side pushing on the back saw the attempt at the block. You see the numbers, you just stay off of them. During the return, 10 yards, first down. Dan Johnson, the culprit, and the ball taken back to the Miami 12-yard line. Well, if you can read their names, don't push them in the back. <laughs> Let them go. As Dan Marino ducks his head in the huddle, another of the many statistics about Marino. If you look at the penalty yards. 111 against the Colts, but they lead 23-21. Marino has not been sacked today. In 65 career games, he's been sacked only 63 times. And he's going deep for Clayton, but too far. Well covered on the play by Eugene Daniel, 38. Only sacked less than an average of one per game, but that's partly due to his quick That's release. a quarterback stat as much as anything, and, and part of the reason for that is his awareness. When you've got pressure on Marino, he always has a sense of where to put that football to get it out of there, and he's not afraid to dump it out of there. He'll throw it out of bounds, throw it to an empty spot on the field which is important to an offensive line. They know they don't have to stand there all day and protect the quarterback that's going to take all those shots and all those hits. On the ground this time. <laughs> the Stratford, the rookie, to the 18-yard line, where it'll be third and four. John Hand, 78, made the tackle. For whom would you vote? as the greatest running back in National Football League history. I think I'd have to. I mean, the numbers are there. Peyton, uh, yeah, I know you know. I was going to ask you, who is, who's your pick out of that group? I'd have to dial 900-220-2722. You've seen a lot of these games. You've seen it. You've watched all of those men very carefully. To Stratford. No flag. And, boy, they could have thrown another there. At least a lot of fans thought so. Terry Wright, 27. A little contact. 
Now let's go to NFL Live. Dick in the fourth quarter in Pittsburgh, it's Houston 20 and Pittsburgh 3. Drew Hill hauls in this 42-yarder from Warren Moon. Yeah, Dick, the raw totals go to Peyton, but the percentages to Jimmy Brown. He's in front of him in yards per carry, yards per game, and he won eight rushing titles. Roby to Bill Brooks. Dolphins, a 52-yard Roby punt, five-yard return at the end of the third quarter here in Miami. At the end of three, it's 23-21. Colts will be back after these messages from your local station. She married seven husbands, including Cary Grant, searching for the happiness money couldn't buy. Farrah Fawcett and poor little rich girl tomorrow. Education, the key to your future. Nothing's more important. New England Tech's the leader in career education, and we're doing something to make college affordable. We're freezing tuition at this fall's rate for students who plan to enter the college anytime next year. But you must be serious about your future and contact New England Tech before January 1st. Call 467-7744. That's 467 7 At 1130, here on Channel 10. The fourth quarter here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Other games are already in the final period. Look at our 10-minute ticker. Detroit after the win against Dallas, playing the Redskins tough at Washington. Most of the game still very much in doubt as it is here as the visiting Colts, a touchdown underdog, leading 23-21. Three Miami fumbles have been the difference for the Colts. And they have the ball again, starting from their 35, first play, fourth quarter. Dickerson, who has not fumbled today, although he led running backs in the NFL in fumbles last year. There are the statistics through three, Merlin. Colts with a decided edge in total yardage, 304 to 229 on the day. And you look at the rushing yardage, and of course, that's Dickerson's domain. Turnovers, that big three, perhaps the most significant number on the chart. And those are turnovers committed. Fumbles, all of them by the Miami Dolphins. One on first and goal at the one. Dickerson again. Set off that time as Jackie Schiff was there from the outside and offered all from the inside to make the stop. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. The game is the property of the National Football League, Indianapolis Colts and Miami Dolphins, all rights reserved. John Boza hobbling to the sideline on that last play. Too many men on the field. They did. The pass is to Bentley anyway, and he has a first down as he's knocked out of bounds at the Colt 49. And that was a good heady play by Hogabo. He saw that Betters was having trouble getting off the field. He took the ball on a quick snap and got the 12-man call. 12 men defense. Now, how many times have you seen a Shula coach team make that kind of mistake twice in a day? Tom Olivadotti says, I can't believe it either. Shula will have a conversation with him about that one. Really didn't matter. They got more yards out of the Bentley catch anyway. I think what hurt was the injury. John, John Boza was hurt, obviously, and it looked like they were trying to shuffle some bodies in and out, and they just didn't get it done in time. Seems like it's been more than that, doesn't it? Yeah. Better's in now at their right defensive end position. Miami hurting in that defensive line. Many years over at that left defensive end position, but watch him on the right-hand side of your screen. Takes on the blocker, one-to-one, -one, and just hammers. Well, that's Joel Patton trying to block on Betters, and Betters unloaded him and then unloaded on Albert Bentley. Ouch! That 75 has been a big number for Dolphins. Manny Fernandez wore it in the 70s. Defensive tackle. It's Booza in motion. 
Hogaboom underneath to beach the tight end at the 42, where Jackie Ship makes the defensive play. A couple yards shy of a first down. Look at the end of that play and ball breaking loose after possession. <laughs> Boy, that's a pretty tough little juggling trick to hit it the ground, roll over, and pick it up. I wonder what he does with three or four oranges. If you go back, I said that was Joel Patton blocking on betters. That was actually Chris Hinton, the left, uh, left tackle. Third and a yard and a half. Bentley, first down. Well, there he's still got it. So Albert Bentley for Eric Dickerson. And boy, they can wear you down with those two backs. Bentley's only 5'11 in height, but he weighs three pounds less than Dickerson. He's 214. Well, he said when Dickerson arrived, he said, this will add a couple of years to my career, my longevity. But they are using those two hammers very effectively in this drive. And, of course, chewing the clock as they go. They'd love to be able to drive it all the way down, eat a nice chunk off that clock, and then put it in for seven. Well, Bentley's quite a testimony, too, to not giving up. We'll tell you that later. Ogleboom faking to Dickerson and throwing down the middle, almost intercepted. Paul Langford, good coverage. Bill Brooks. Ball bouncing out of the hands there very, very often. You end up with the interception Interception in a case like that. Langford timing his leap perfectly. Arrived with the football. Able to bat that one away. And so many times today we've seen the leap made just a little early. And a yellow flag tagged to the process. From the 39 of Miami. 21 early fourth quarter. The quick out to Brandis. And the tight end has a first down at the 27. Brzezinski gets him from behind. Check of the other scores. Dallas hanging on to that 14-7 lead at New England. Jets get a field goal from Leahy, now lead by a touchdown. Buffalo closes somewhat against Cleveland. Houston apparently a winner at Pittsburgh. Oilers quietly getting a lot of good things done this year. Minnesota by six at home. First down Colts. Another good drive engineered by Hogeboom. Mixing the running of Bentley and Dickerson with some uh, well-aimed passes. Dickerson up the middle, a big hole. Almost fumbled. You could see the ball there for a moment. Down to the 20. Six more for Dickerson, gives him 133 for the afternoon. Let's go inside and look at the blocking of Donaldson, Salt, Utt, all three man on man, and Donaldson just manhandling number 70, Socia on the inside, dumping him on the ground. And Blackwood taking the punishment from Dickerson. This evening. Veteran Glenn Blackwood, number 47, he meets Dickerson head on and gets much the worse. We'd like to use the Telestrator to illustrate that block, but we unfortunately will not be able to do that. But look at number 70, Brian Socher right on the nose. Watch the way Donaldson just manhandles him and pushes him out of the way, giving Dickerson room. Now watch Blackwood try and take Dickerson on. Boy, that is a real collision. Of course, Blackwood injured in that mash, but you feel the great power of Dickerson in that play. And Blackwood winding that shoulder, trying to get his body put back together. Second down and four. Dickerson again, hesitating, waits for the block. Oh, he's such a smart runner. I think that's one of the things that uh, both Marino and Dickerson and their likenesses, they, they, their football intelligence. Let's take another peek inside. You get a feeling for the effective use of those big bodies in the front line for Indianapolis. And of course, when you have a power back behind you and a 293 yard or 293 pound average up front, you've got some real muscle to lean on. 11 plays on this drive, consuming time. 10-15 left in the fourth. Whoops. Dickerson losing his balance and falls to the line of scrimmage. Offered all there, the middle backer to secure him. 
one of the things that I think Eric Dickerson will discover in Indianapolis, he will no longer have a home field that is natural turf. In fact, the Indianapolis Colts are playing today, during this season, their first game on natural turf. They only have two more on the season, once in Cleveland and once at San Diego. I've got to tell you, that's going to take some of the life out of Dickerson's legs because you just can't take the pounding as well on the turf as you do on natural grass. Bentley replaces Dickerson. And Hogeboom throws that one away. Now Bentley back in there just to finish the story as Hogeboom goes down throwing. Bentley went to college as a walk-on. No one recruited him. He just found his way, worked his way into shape, became one of those players on that Miami team that won the national championship in 83. Drafted in the supplemental round by the Colts. He played in the USFL for a couple of years. And now, well, he is, uh, he's been a well-kept secret. He really has. Great performer. Big third down situation here. And love to pick up that first down or get it in the end zone. And Miami's crowd wants to help their defense. Beats the tight end. Knocked out of bounds at the six-yard line. That's not good enough for a first down. It'll be fourth and two. Don McNeil, number 28, made the play. Blackwood, by the way, is back in the lineup, so he's okay. He is tough. Beach will be coming out to the right-hand side of your picture here. He's the release man. Now he wants to get upfield, but just a good hit there by William Judson, number 49, who has had his well-documented problems on the day, but he certainly made a nice play there to stop the potential first down. 24-yard field goal attempt, apparently. But this is trading a three for a seven again, and it's a formula that Meyer doesn't like. Sushi from short range has another easy field goal, officially 23 yards to go with a 25, 22, and 32-yard successful kick. Game is being brought to you by MasterCard. Every time you choose MasterCard to make a purchase, we'll make a contribution to one of six worthy causes. By Mazda, bringing performance and value together. That's the Mazda way. And by AT&T, the right choice. Dick Kenberg, Merlin Olson, Joe Robbie Stadium, around 70,000 here today. 26-21 as Dean Biasucci has kicked four short field goals in four tries. Boy, he looks young enough to play in high school, doesn't he? That's, a, that's a, got a baby face on that one. And now it'll be Miami's turn. Plenty of time, 9-22 remaining. the best kickoff of the day for Biasucci. Two yards deep. Stratford. Flag down and another as Stratford is tackled at the 28. Chris Good, another stop on special teams. But it appears they're going to bring that one back. And we called on an earlier kick against Dan Johnson. He and Crash Jensen, the two Dolphins close to where that flag went down. They'll mark it half the distance from the 16, so that means they're going to be down at the 8-yard line. Now Miami has the full field ahead, trailing by five. Illegal block, number 29. Half the distance of the goal line. Still first down. Lifford Hobley, number 29. The man that they nailed for the infraction. I'm trying to explain the, what happened there. Timeout has been called. Nine minutes, 11 seconds remain. Marino and Miami down by five. NBC doubleheader next Sunday beginning with NFL Live. The Colts will be at New England. Buffalo and the Jets. The Jets have won in Kansas City. That's the first half of our doubleheader. We'll show it to you again. Woody Bennett as the Miami Dolphins start from their eight-yard line. Another flag comes down. And it would appear against the Dolphins for holding or illegal use of the hands. Nice tackle by Barry Krause, number 55, on that play. Well, we know that's the penalty, so that gives us a chance to go back to the NBC doubleheader next Sunday. New England still trailing Dallas 14-10 in the fourth, by the way. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, and Cleveland and Houston will battle. A key Central Division game. The second half of the doubleheader features these two games. San Diego 
Seven and one going into tonight's game against the Raiders will be at Seattle, and Denver will play at Los Angeles in the Coliseum. Holding during the running play, 27, half the distance of the goal line, still first down. Lorenzo Hampton. But started well for him. He scored the first touchdown, but since then, he's had a critical fumble on the one-yard line and now a penalty. Oh, the Colts, the last two times they've had the ball, they've had it almost a full quarter, almost 15 minutes, to get only six points. A two-long drive to field goal from his own end zone. And Bruce Hardy can't catch it, and he can't kick it either. He missed it up. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. Hardy, one of the most dependable of third down and possession down receivers cutting across the middle that ball perfectly thrown just lost his concentration momentarily and he's <laughs> come on kick it, Bruce. Get it. he missed it twice <laughs> well the rams has uh, finally won their second game eric dickerson's old team beats st louis 27 24 on a lansford field goal at the gun the crowd. Troy Stratford being helped off the field. Looks like he took an elbow trying to protect in there and help Marino. Marino just putting that ball out in front of Pruitt. So on this occasion, kept his concentration. Look at Marino just arching that pass at the last second. Darby there to knock him down. I got a lousy seat here. Lovely, lovely seat. pass. And Stratford, uh, apparently a shoulder injury as he comes off. 37 yards on the play. First down at the Miami 41. 820 left in the fourth. It's the Colts by five. Bennett trapped in his own backfield and will lose about a yard. Wayne Bickett, number 50, in on that tackle. Nick, very Krause. Well, we'll talk about it after the ticker gets through, clicking through here. There are the other scores. The final end from Kansas City as the Chiefs lose another close one. And the Rams with their win. How about Kraus? 55 from Alabama. Reconstructive surgery. And boy, he went through a real trial to get back on the field. It's, it's worth recounting. If it's a catch, then that's a fumble again. And apparently it is. Glasgow, who recovered the fumble down on the goal line, returns it out to midfield. And it's been penalties and fumbles, and I wouldn't want to be in Don Shula's locker room if this continues and the Dolphins fail to win today. Shula prides himself in putting a team on the field that makes few mistakes. I don't, I don't think that's a catch because I don't think, well, I don't think that's a fumble because the ground can't make you fumble. Now, if it's a catch, I think it'll go back there, and I think the ball will belong to Miami. Yeah, they're looking at it. That might just be an incomplete pass because he did not get both feet down, and when the, he landed on the ground, well, they got a commercial timeout. Well, they'll look at the replay. It's a radio show. If you're keeping score, I hope you did it with pencil, because erase the fumble recovery by Glasgow. This is nothing more than an incomplete pass. Hardy catches it, but when he lands, he does not have control. It is not a catch, so the instant replay overrules, and it's nothing but third and ten. You were right, Merlin. The ground can't. An incomplete Exchange. pass. That's right. That's right. Now, because he was not touched, had he possessed the ball first and then gone to the ground and fumbled the ball, it would have been a fumble because no one touched him. But there was no possession until he hit the ground. The ball pops loose. They call it incomplete. So third and ten Miami at the 41. Still trailing by five. 26-21 midpoint fourth quarter. Marino to gun. Intercepted. Number 42, Willie Tullis has the ball.
to believe, Dick, and we talked about it at halftime, that one year ago, most of these same players and most of the same coaching staff for the Indianapolis Colts were 0 and 13. Ron Meyer has done a great job of helping this team to turn around the way they feel about themselves. They now are believers. Well, this is uh, newsworthy. Marino throwing an interception. Only is fifth this year. Boom comes out throwing to Matt Boza. And Boza with about nine out to the 46 of the Dolphins. Offered all with a tackle. Willie Tellus getting congratulations on the sideline. He was right there on James Pruitt to snare that football and take it away. Remember him at uh, out of Troy State, his rookie first game against the Rams that we did a few years ago? He turned to kick off, what was it, in overtime for a touchdown? I think it was. Late in the game. Secures him. A little bit of fatigue, perhaps. Dickerson not used that extensively after the strike by the Rams. Has really not played as much during this season as he is used to playing. And his legs may be tiring a little bit. He's had a lot of work here today. 27 rushes on the day. That's certainly not a record for him, but that's a lot of running. Well, you wonder how long the Colts' all-time rushing record for a game will hold. I mean, he's getting even within that range today. Well, any of that, he has not broken a long one. He's always capable of that. Here he comes. And doesn't get much there to the 41-yard line. The man who holds the Colts' single-game rushing record has a relationship with both these teams. He played both with the Colts in Baltimore and was a good runner for the Miami Dolphins. Let's just think about that a bit. Can you come up with a name of the Colts' single-game I'll, I'll give you one. It wasn't Don Nottingham. It wasn't him. <laughs> That's right, and he did play for both yeah, teams. He did. Jets, for the moment, are in front, having completed their game at Kansas City. 150 yards now for Dickerson. The record for the Colts is 198 for a single game. Ogaboom drilling it, incomplete. Tim Sherwin, the intended target. Norm Bulash, Norm Bulash, 198 yards. Against the Jets in 71 is the Colts all-time record. That won't last long. One would think that it won't take long for Dickerson to find a 200-yard game. Houston now with a big win against the Steelers, a final. As you look at that scoreboard, Dick Enberg, you got to remember that in spite of the fact that the Colts have dominated late in this game, less than a touchdown ahead at this point, Third down to Bentley, and what a catch! 25-23, Albert Bentley in traffic, and the Colts sustain their drive on a 17-yard reception. Really not safe until they get a few more points on the board, and Hogaboom realizing that, makes a long handoff to Albert Bentley there. Boy, he is a fine athlete. There's an example of great hands. He juggles the ball and he actually caught it down around his thighs and yet quickly got it in his possession. And once he got both hands on it, it was his and a big first down at the 23. You know he's got a lot of family here growing up in the Miami area, Bentley. Dickerson. Sosha, who was nearest, Dickerson could not get it for the Dolphins. Looking from the end, so let's see, let's see if somebody tapped that ball or if Dickerson just dropped it. I think maybe he just dropped it, trying to shift hands. No, Sosha reached out, touched that football, swatted it loose. Dickerson not always secure in the way he handles that ball. He uses that ball for balance at times. Of course, that's one of the marks of a great runner. They they take some risks. The Sayer, Simpson, they all did that. All took some risks with that football. Here he comes again with some running room outside. Oh, great stiff arm. Oh, two of them. <laughs> Offered all. Got the first one. Just popped him right in the head with it. Three yards more for Dickerson. What's that? 30 runs on the day for Dickerson? Still without the great run on the day, the big one. But look at that stiff arm. Just pops one, Ooh. pops two. I'll tell you, he might have made a good fighter. Those jabs with that arm poking out there. 
He's got a hand problem. You saw him earlier with ice on that hand. I think he's going over to you see him with that right hand. I think he's got a few problems with it still. Another third down for the Colts. Remember, with a five-point lead, a field goal gives them more than a touchdown advantage. So they don't want to cough it up, and they play it safe in a big hole for Bentley. And he has a touchdown. Albert Bentley, 17-yard draw. what Ron Meyer wanted. He wanted some breathing room, and Albert Bentley has just given it to him. Good call on the draw play. Miami coming with the blitz. They split the blitz right there. Fry, number 53, the and John Socia, number 70, the two men who had the shot at him, and Bentley went right up the middle. Well, Dickerson may be a star, but Bentley has shown the kind of promise that he is an exciting athlete. Yasuchi adds the extra point. So since Miami took the early lead, 14-0, the Colts have outscored the Dolphins 33-7. And Bentley, a big 17-yard run with a great individual effort. Good timing. Watch the move he puts on the defensive halfback, Bud Brown. Boom. See you later. And then has the strength at the five-yard line to break that one and get in the end zone. Albert Bentley from Miami University. Tom Oliva Dottie, who's the defensive coordinator of the Miami Dolphins, was at Miami when Bentley was there. And I'm sure he doesn't have to be reminded of that young man's talents. Dickerson, of course, off to the side as a result of that injury to his hand, I think, may have had trouble hanging on that football. And I wonder if he was thinking about last week. You know, if he'd lost that ball with a five-point lead, Miami would have had it. Marino's hands instead. Here, here's the play last week. 13 all, four minutes to go. Down inside the five. The tackle. Ball shoots free, and the Chargers recover it right there and go on downfield, eat up the rest of the clock, kick a field goal, and come out with a win 16-13, and a fumble that was talked about all week long. Today, he fumbles, but recovers his own fumble, and he and Bentley combining to uh, give the rushing defense of the Dolphins nightmare. You see the ice again on that right hand, and that ball was in his right hand when it was knocked away by Socia. The Redskins have beaten the Lions 20-13. Doug Williams quarterbacking a couple of touchdown passes. Stratford, the rookie, spinning out across the 20-yard line. Well, a busy week on NBC next week. And one of the classics, Thoroughbred Racing's biggest day, the Breeders' Cup, seven races, $10 million, capped by the $3 million classic that will feature on Saturday, the conclusion of our four-hour telecast from Hollywood Park. Ali Sheba, the Kentucky winner this year, Derby winner this year. Ferdinand, who won the Derby a year ago, are in the field, along with a horse that won the classic last year, Skywalker. It'll be a great climax to a tremendous day of racing. Hope you'll be with us. 2 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday from Hollywood Park. Marino, he's got to get one score and another. The Dolphins need a couple of touchdowns. Pruitt unable to hang on to that one. Another catch of a ball. Pruitt having that roller coaster day, making a brilliant catch in one moment and then dropping an easy catch in the next. Over Miami, Marino, who can get you a lot of yards in a hurry. They need to score quickly and then get the ball back. They have all their timeouts left in the second half. The Colts will take out some linebackers and go with six defensive backs in this situation. Seven, I think. Marino just does get that one away and almost intercepted. Mike Pryor, number 39. 47, Freddie Robinson, but it was Pryor that had the best shot at it. He has four interceptions, a replacement player. Pryor cutting across right at the last second. Marino, under pressure, tries to loft it down the middle. There's Pryor, number 39, got a hand on that football. Ball underthrown as Marino just simply had to get rid of it. Getting a lot of heat inside. Either Cooks or Donnell Thompson, one or the other. I believe Donnell Thompson, the man who put the heat on it. Now Gary Hogeboom will be proud of those numbers as being matched against Dan Marino. And of course, he was uh, he had some pretty good allies, Bentley and Dickerson, to help his passing game. A flag now. 
Guido got him again with a count. Dick, how many times today has he been able to sucker that Indianapolis secondary with that stuttered count? Stuck in a other final. Defense number 98. Johnny Davis Cook. Accepted. Houston gave that earlier, 23-3 over Pittsburgh. Big play was the Warren Moon to Drew Hill, 42-yard touchdown. Only three points scored by the Steelers at home. We'll give you the other scores on our 10-minute ticker. And for this uh, big crowd at Joe Robbie Stadium, they're fighting for the exits. Very quiet. With a penalty, third down. Minutes, 10 seconds left. Incomplete. Off the hands of Stratford. John Holt, number 21, right there on top of him. They're not going to kick. Uh, Roby started on the field, but Shula called him back. They'll go for it, obviously. There's the isolation. Holt, right on top of Stratford. One hand in front, one behind. Knocked that football away. Stratford, who was hurt uh, earlier, bruised his shoulder, but obviously okay. But that might have been part of the failure of him to pull in the ball. You can see how this crowd has is, is left. Very, very quiet. Marino, fourth and six. And the Colts celebrate on the sidelines as they take over on downs. And one of the things they did today, a rarity, Dan Marino under 50 percent passing 14 for 33 did have several drops nevertheless the Colts defense did what they needed to do and they got the running game to support Hogaboom on his return at quarterback Marino has created his own trap I'm sure Dick we have come to expect such greatness out of him that ordinary numbers are disgusting <laughs> Isn't that incredible that's only the fourth time in four and a half years Marino has not hit 50 percent or more Oh, New England, and that's a big score. Trying to force an overtime. Ogaboom now could just try to chew up the clock. Three minutes and a second left. Well, he's got some folks out there who can help him do it. Albert Bentley to the 19. Dick, let me finish this story, and I told the people we'd tell it uh, about Barry Krause, who's off of the sideline with the defense right now, but it illustrates how this Colt team has come back. He had an operation in the offseason. They said it would be a minor operation. turned out to be major surgery, and he then developed staph infection in that knee. And, of course, they had to give him several uh, courses of, of antibiotics where he actually had to uh, take them intravenously every six hours during the day for two months or for six weeks. They had to go through that twice before they could kill off that antibiotic. He's still taking antibiotics and will have to take them for the next two years to keep that staph infection down. And here he is. He dropped His weight dropped to 215 pounds, is now back up to 250, and he's out there playing and a very important cog in Ron Meyer's team. Well, that is an important quote for those of you not with us earlier. We showed you that earlier. Ron Meyer pointing his team toward this game. We're 4-4, four and four, but we really aren't the team we want to be until the day comes that we beat the Miami Dolphins. They have not done that. Don Shula's team had rolled off 14 consecutive wins. Last time Shula and the Dolphins lost to the Colts was here in 1980. But that apparently has come to an end today. Let's finish those stats. Since Rod Meyer took over, he is 6-1 and one within the division. He is 5-1 and one on the road. Now, i got to tell you, it won't last. But for the moment, he's the king. And he almost became the head coach at Purdue, as you know. Was in the area, and Jim Irsay, the coach, said, uh, I'd like to talk to you. And instead of returning to his alma mater as head coach, took the job with the Colts and uh, immediately won three in a row, a team that was 0-13 as he replaced Rod Dauhauer. And the toughest job was getting a team that had been losing, that was convinced that they would find a way to lose every game, to begin to believe in themselves. That three-win start for him gave him a very positive off-season to build. And he's used that productively to arrive here today at a very important moment in cold history. Dolphins using their first time out. Third and two now. And I don't think that's going to be enough for Bentley to get the 
first down. We'll see. Or they give uh, forward progress. If it is a first down, then the rest of the game is academic. They can just run out the clock. There's the two-minute timeout. So they'll use that timeout to measure for a possible first down. But it's a day for the Colts in Miami. AT&T, the right choice. Tom Fear's record of 18 receptions in a single game may never be there, but it's keeping our options open now and down the road. Stephon Payton. Miami, where a frustrated Dan Marino can only watch on the sidelines as he sees the Colts pick up a first down at the 16-yard line. Dallas and New England are now in overtime. New England had gained the lead on a touchdown pass from Tom Ramsey Whoa. to Stanley Morgan, and then Roger Ruzek of the Cowboys with 28 seconds left hit on a 22-yard field goal. Now here's the report card today, one of our NBC features this year in the final two minutes. Hogaboom with a Outstanding day coming back from injury. Dickerson, 154 big yards, and Bentley, a solid 65. And Biasucci, perfect on the short field goals. And, of course, it's the combination of that nice passing and running that kept Marino on the sideline so much of the day. A star, Marino had an off day, under 50%. It just didn't click for him today. Three of the four turnovers, fumbles, and maybe the single biggest play of the game. First and goal on the one-yard line with the lead 21-20. And Lorenzo Hampton fumbled, and that turned the whole game around. Dickerson saying it isn't always me that drops the ball right by the goal line. That's right. Dickerson today is complete. Bentley will carry it out the rest of the way and less hurt. And he has another big chunk of yardage. Another final. Minnesota hangs on at home, or at down at Tampa Bay, rather, 23-17. And Cleveland has beaten Buffalo 27-21. Timeout, 148 remaining. I don't know where to start telling you about Mazda trucks. Uh, they've been rated first in customer satisfaction two years in a row. They've got the best warranty in the truck business. It covers you bumper to bumper. This and measuring our two headliners, the two big stars, Marino and Dickerson, throughout, and based on their average, career average, Marino, it was up par for him. Dickerson had another big day. Both on track at halftime, so in the second half, it's been a Dickerson second half, and not so for Marino. Albert Bentley wouldn't be too far behind, and he's the solo back behind Hogaboom. He gets the call again, and he's close to another touchdown all the way to the two-yard line. First and goal for the Colts. I want to thank everyone involved today here in Miami. George Finkel, our producer, John Gonzalez, the director, Joe Costanza and company, Bo McComas, Harry Von Suskill, Ken Lee, Rick Butler with their help in the booth. As they did last week, by running the football so effectively, they have been able to control the football. Time of possession, over 33 minutes for the Colts. You saw what it was for the Dolphins. And, of course, when you can do that, you force a team to play a different kind of game. That's what the running game will do for you. And it, the Colts able to exploit, again, as many teams have, the running weakness of this Miami defense. Bentley has another cold touchdown and some frosting for Indianapolis. score with the extra point 40 to 21 and that means they've outscored the home team 40 to 7 since the early Dolphin lead. Bentley all the way over the top. Boy, he, he's got some spring in those legs. Good job up front again by that cold offensive line. They deserve some stars by their names today too, Dick. Indianapolis Colts have not had a winning team since Baltimore 10 years ago. Yasuchi adds the extra point. And they're not only looking for respect, they want to be winners. And from what we've seen today, the Colts are a team that are a legitimate contender in the AFC East. They're losing years, perhaps, in the past. And that you don't like to see this late in the game as Rick Graff, the rookie from Wisconsin, is down. 
Dick, one of the things that you have to know that this game does for the Colts, and I talked about confidence and believing in themselves, this was a big hurdle to have successfully come to, to meet the Dolphins on their home turf and to walk away with this kind of victory has got to mean a great deal in the way they feel about themselves as they approach the last part of this season. And you sense that. You said that uh, down in the locker room. You just Great tackles. And here's here you'll see him come just to the left. He's just going to take off and gone for a TD down the field. It's just an off tackle. Good job. They take Graham to help. At uh, Dickerson, he's our most valuable player, and Bud Weiser will make a count. Fred Marion misses the tackle. Now it's a foot race, and you want to bet. Now Ray Claiborne can run, but so can Herschel Walker. And he can't quite knock him out of. With 154 yards, Bentley chips in with 83. Oh, that is a one-two punch. And a Miami defense that felt they were on the mend. They'd had a pretty good week last week against Cincinnati. Embarrassed here today, and it's back to the drawing boards for Tom Olivadotti. Well, you said you had to outscore Miami, you had to outscore Marino. That's exactly what they did. Four Miami turnovers were a key. 20 points resulted from the three fumbles and the interception. This one comes down to Bruce Hardy, one of the blockers in the wedge, and he's to the 35-yard line. Well, we started with the stars of the 80s, the top runner the last four years plus, Eric Dickerson, the top passer, no question, Dan Marino. Well, today's day... I can put him in his own key light. Is that what you yeah, gave guys in acting? Is that a key light? Is little, that what little key light to light it up. Uh, I'll tell you, he helped to light the fire under his teammates today. He may be a colt, but nah, what do you think? <laughs> he is a big horse. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> He's a stallion. That's a stallion. That's not a colt. <laughs> Updated standings uh, with the Colts now 5-4, and four, but importantly, as we showed you earlier, they also have by far now the best record in the division. So they really are in first place at the moment. Tony Nathan with Don Strzok, the quarterback. Strzok replacing Marino with 50 seconds left. They further enhance their divisional marks as they tack up another win within the division. 5-1 and one within the division. You can see how far that puts them in the lead of their closest trailers. Struck his first pass of the game, throws underneath to Nathan. They keep him in the field of play, and the clock will continue to run. Glasgow with a tackle. It's a very big win for Meyer and for Indianapolis, and the folks in Indiana have cause to celebrate. They indeed do, and I'm sure they will, as this team will, as it heads for home. All the scores, the highlights, the big plays, and the results of the contest. Greatest ever running back. We can have that again about five years from now and see who wins. <laughs> well, there's, there's a man here who's going to figure that. you got to believe that. Mild celebration on the sidelines with nine seconds to go. We have the, the results and all the details of today. It has uh, become a season with uh, so many new cities with hope. The Houstons and the Indianapolises and the Buffaloes, San Diego. Strzok firing downfield. That'll be intercepted right into the arms of the defense. Robinson, the rookie, he might take it all away. Only Strzok to beat. And Strzok slows him up in the tackle from behind as the game ends as Freddie Robinson denied an interception for touchdown that would have really been the topping on the cake. Ron Myers, Colts, see a 68-yard interception return. Don Shula in a game where his team plagued by mistakes and ultimately a fumble on the one-yard line going in with a 21-20 lead really sealed the doom of the Dolphins. Very seldom that we see a Shula team play that kind of sloppy football, and I'm sure that there will be some very heavy conversation about that this next week. Well, Meyer didn't need a snowplow today. He had a big stallion pulling the wagon. <laughs> Eric Dickerson. And uh, he carried many, including that man, Hogaboom, to a big win as an underdog. Dick Kenberg, Merlin Olson. So long from Miami. Stay tuned for NFL Live.